Yes, the room fill up. Be sure, and I mean just that. Be sure to hit the like, share this content, let that friend or that neighbor know where to go when it's time. Cowboys upcoming draft is needed, plus major doubts and more. Come on. There's the room fill up. Be sure. And I mean just that. Hit the like button. Share this content. Come on. Yo. this i wish raindrops would fall <laughs> all right man appreciate everybody one love to each and every last one of you go you all for tuning in i thank everybody for being part of these type of episodes i know the off season is long and uh the draft is right around the corner i think we're like three and a half weeks away and that's when the optimism will be back on our side, right? So far, people are still mad, you know. And uh, and I get it. Everybody have a right to be mad, angry, frustrated, looking for somebody to uh, slap around and shame them, you know, st- stab them. Shame. <laughs> in the back <laughs> with the shame. butter knife. Shame. And uh, I- I'm not listening to nobody's breaking news, by the way, because everybody got jokes, man. Uh, breaking news, man. <laughs> I forgot it was April Fool's Day. That's what it is. You know, I-, I wouldn't do y'all like that. So I hope that you guys wouldn't do me like that. Y- y'all going to do me like that? You going to do this to me? <laughs> huh? Verdi, you going to do this to me? <laughs> Natasha, what's-, what's up, Joe? What's good with y'all? Coach Marv, everybody, man, that's in the house, man. So, uh, and appreciate you, Adam, for the uh, uh, cash app. 15 uh, for your mom before we even get going. Come on, baby. Yeah, Peasy says April Fool's is Clowns Day. You know, see what they, you know, I don't want to turn to conspiracy law, but y'all know what they did to April Fool's Day. <laughs> Today is actually the first day of the new year. Oops, I'm, I'm talking too much, but neither here nor there. Um, the Dallas Cowboys this offseason, it's been the drama for your mama. And uh, we've been having little issues here with Mozzie. He's got a shoulder situation. We got Luke Schoonmaker, a shoulder situation. And it's quite strange that both of those boys were our two first-round draft picks. And they both from Michigan University. So uh, a lot of us looking at it like, hey, let's leave those Michigan players along. But now people are saying, hey, man, that's just them. You know, everybody else, come on, just give us a, a, a hope that law, that if we can still draft Blake Corum, he won't be like those two. Or the junior Carlson. So I'm I'm sitting here thinking like, hey, <laughs> I don't know about voodoo and all of this stuff, but let's let's realize and understand <laughs> we can stay far away. It won't hurt us at all, man. Scorpio says a Michigan curse. I don't know what it is, man, uh, but but it is what it is. Shout out to you, Keith Henderson. Appreciate you. Not the chicken, though. Yeah, shout out to Henderson chicken. Um, but here, here's what I want to go over. Of course, we're going to talk about Rain, Dakota Prescott, because there was a situation. But before we go into Rain, Dakota Prescott, because I know April shower brings May flowers and it's raining here. So if my Internet gets all snapped up, if I lose light or power, just know that I'm OK. Right. <laughs> just know that I'm OK. Right. Because it's been a storm real bad where I'm at. But first and foremost, they did a topic on the nightcap. They kicking everybody ass over there. Ocho Cinco and Shay Sharp. They they beating everybody down, man. Look at the views and and look at what they're doing as far as tractions and interactions, right? But it's great relief because you get a chance to hear 
old school philosophy and talk, and then you get Ocho on our side, and then you get, you know how uh, Shay Sharp be, you know, and all I ask. Hush, 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 hush. But here's what I want to say. Before we get into the conversational pool, do any of you all feel sorry for Mike McCarthy? Let me see a yes or a no in the chat because that's the topic line where we're going to start off at. Do any of you all feel sorry for Mike McCarthy? Michael McCarthy. I got... Uh, I got one yes, three no's. Ah, all you got to do is say yes. <laughs> mm. Boy. Ooh, boy, another of y'all on his side. Uh, hey, man, to a degree, to a degree, to a degree, I, I don't feel sorry for him. I just feel bad for him. I just feel bad for Big Mike, you know. I just, I don't feel sorry for him. I don't feel sorry. I just feel bad for him because he's making a lot of money. But he's the lowest paid head coach in the National Football League. In the National Football League. I don't know if I can get that high again. National Football League. Yeah, 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 yeah. He getting paid. So a lot of people saying no, no. But he is. And, and this is not an argument. But these are truths. He is better than Jason Garrett. You know, <laughs> he's better than Jason Garrett. So let's listen to this, man. All right. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Let me. Yeah. Got to put a little cover over it. Yeah. 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 Law finna get deep with it. Can I go deep, deep, deep? Yeah, 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 yeah. Better terms to say, I feel bad for him. I feel bad for him. Why does everybody continue to come out and say things? Jerry says stuff. Now Mike McCarthy's saying stuff. Of course you're gonna take the same approach that you've always taken. Maybe you need to do something different as a coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Maybe the results would be different come this season. But I mean, Listen, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't even know what else to say because every, 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 at every turn, guess who's making the headlines? The Cowboys, mm -hmm. continuously. Now I understand, I understand, I'm very smart and understand the Dallas Cowboys move the needle yeah. when it comes to media. Shout out they to you, Matt. The, the Cowboys, Shout the Lakers, Mash. the Yankees, they move the needle. Greg Berry, I but see. Again, you. at some point, what you move the needle, salute. the results and the production has to match up. Eastside Harold, you salute. Get the media and it just doesn't yeah let me tell you something i've never heard i've never all right so before he go in i want to ask the poll again keep the interaction going hit the like share this content if my facebook squad is here let me know in the facebook side i don't see none of my facebook people i see you now chuck appreciate you james appreciate you let me ask again do you feel sorry for mike mccarthy it's a yes or a no. Do you feel sorry for him? Now, my thing is 12 and 5, 12 and 5, 12 and 5. All that brother's life, he had to fight. <clears throat> this will be his first year where the entire situation is on him. And he don't have to look behind or over his shoulders. Year one, he still had Kellen Moore learning and trying to take take everything and anything that he tried to put out there hey i don't like option routes hey we're gonna put option routes out there anyhow <laughs> that's that that's standard for two years right 2020 2021 and 2022 three years i meant to say three years and then dan quinn i i don't want to call him the sabotage man but if the shoe fits man he got to wear it He got rid of all of our resources. <laughs> I don't like defensive tackles, man. Let's use edge rushes as defensive tackle. I don't like linebackers. Let's, let's use safeties as linebackers. But I will give the nod that Dan Quinn did help our safety rooms out because we were bad, we we're bad, bad, bad in safety. <laughs> but let's get it. So this is his first year. I think him and Mike Zim, Mike and Mike, they kind of, 
you know, chip off the old block there, you know. They both kind of had similar circles fighting each other in the same conference or division. Both of them on a one-year deal. Both of them one foot in, one foot out. But let's listen to Shay Shay. I've never heard of a person owning a, an exotic snake, a cobra, a gaboon viper, uh, whatever the case may be, a venomous snake. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden they get bit and somebody say, you know what, I feel sorry for them. I've heard people say it serves you right. <laughs> right. Because you shouldn't have had the damn snake to begin with. Yeah, first Name the person that you've ever heard, they own a lion, a tiger or a bear, mm-hmm. and they get mauled and people say, damn, I feel so bad for them. Yeah. It serves you right. If you go coach for the Dallas Cowboys, nobody's going to feel sorry for you because you know what you was getting into when you brought your funky ass in the house. <laughs> Wait yeah. a minute. Yeah. Hold on now. Wait a minute. Say. All I ask. <laughs> you got a heavy as the crown, as they say. And. When you coach for the Cowboys, you're going to get that heat. When you're playing for the Cowboys, you're going to get that heat. Now, any other team, they'll sweep it under the rug. It won't make headline news. And and we hope all is well, even with the guy, Rasheed Rice. Uh, I know that he was racing in Dallas. He's from Dallas. He went to SMU. He had to wreck. I don't think that the four-ladder, the three-ladder networks are going to talk heavy on that. They just say, hey, man, that was a bad situation for him, right? But it had it been a Cowboys guy, it would have been plastered over every news, every alley, highway, byway. You know, you got to squeeze some stuff to get the Rashid Rice information. And we hope all is well with all that was involved. And we hope that the people can make a speed of recovery. I will say this. I will say this with, with Chase Sharp. He is right. But it doesn't mean that this should be the right way because we can clearly see with our natural eyes that this team get all the hype even when it's not right. People will say, hey, man, this team had no weakness on defense. No weakness. Even if I pointed out the flaws, you guys would still fight us and say, hey, no excuses, law." Even the people that call into the show. And if I give them full facts of the matter, they don't want to digest it. Yes, that elephant can climb a tree. Yes, I can dive in wet cement and won't get burnt. Yes. Yes, an elephant can fly. They don't want the factual things. Because when you start talking facts, they say, hey, man, these are just excuses. And we end up looking at it like, hey, it's been 30 years and people pinpointed just to number four. And I've been talking so heavily on this. People think that hell law, you and Dak must got a room I'm together. I'm like, no, he's not my roommate. What it is, is that these are the facts. Dak Prescott, from the style and philosophy on how he played the game, he's ultimately going to need, N-E-E-D, a run game. He's going to need things to be in the position in order to help him win. Is it just him? No, other teams do as well. Whether you get it by running back by committee, or you get it by one individual. But if you look back and you see the last 10 teams to win the Super Bowl, they had the ability to run the ball and they had the ability to stop the run. Those are facts. Yes, we can talk about defining moments in the game. We can talk about even Matthew Stafford, who led the league in INTs. But what helped alleviate all of that that he also had the number one defense in the National Football League. And he had a plethora of weapons. And he himself was a dropped INT away 
from the 49ers going back to the Super Bowl or something like that. I think the guy's name was Tart. But I, listen, but obviously you have to understand head coaching jobs, especially a head coaching job like that one of that magnitude with that type of exposure for a historic franchise. That's something you don't pass up as a head coach. Okay. But again, understanding what you have to do to do with understanding what you have to do as a coach there and the pressure that's added on because of the star that's on the helmet and then the higher up that you have to deal with too, who's going to take all the attention and want all the credit. That's a that's a tough task. So in 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 the in that term, I do feel bad for Mr. McCarthy. Guess what? You could have got a less. You could have got a non-venomous snake, or you could not have got a snake at all. You couldn't. You didn't have to get the big cash. You didn't have to get a lion, a tiger, or a bear. <laughs> right. You could guess what you could have got. You mm -hmm. could have got a chihuahua, or you could have got a sheep or a miniature pony. Right. But you chose that. So right. you can't have somebody feel sorry for you, Ocho, with something you chose. Right, you're right. Man, Ocho went off-roading, lifting his Jeep. Well, why the hell he go off-roading anyway? <laughs> I don't feel- I love Ocho, the analogy. I though. don't feel sorry for a person that put themselves in that situation. Right. You can't put yourself in a situation and then ask people to feel sorry for the situation mm -hmm. you put, you put yourself, yourself in. in. Yeah, you're right. You're you right. Know, Okay, like you tell me all the time, you know who Jerry is. You know what Jerry gonna do. Right. And then you want me to feel sorry for a man to go take the job. Nobody knows what Jerry's going to do though, man. Ain't nobody know what Jerry's going to do, you know? <laughs> Shoot, Jerry got a mind of his own. Nobody know what the Jones is gonna do. But we knew there wasn't going to be anything in free agency, though. <laughs> we did knew that part of it, right? We don't dance around in free agency. But we know that part of it, right? But this is the only team in the National Football League got the big three contracts. I'm talking about your quarterback. I'm talking about C.D. Lamb. I'm talking about Michael Parsons. That they going to drag and, you know, I'm from Mississippi. Old folks say pussy foot, you know, and they pussy footing around, you know, meaning that they are taking their time. There's no threat of anybody taking their job. And there's this movie I've been saying for the last three years. I say, go watch it, man. It's called End Times. And End Time, it, it was a, a situation where is currency was your time. Everybody on that planet was granted 25 years. After your 25th year, you got time. <laughs> you got to pay for time. So if you work, you're not trading your dollars. You're not trading your time for dollars. Everything is you trading your time for time. <laughs> your work is time. And for those who had the most amount of time, they moved slowly. Without a care in the world. They knew that they had an infinite amount of time. So... Justin Timberlake, yeah, yeah, Action Powell. Real good movie, real good movie, man. Called End Time, real good movie. And if you, um, if you're part of another world, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mandela Effect, if you're part of another world, you probably saw that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, depending on what time you are in, you know. <laughs> But we ain't gonna talk about the Mandela effect. I don't want to get uh, shadow bind again, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But neither here nor there. No, you already know he's gonna emasculate you. Jerry's voice is gonna be is gonna drown your voice out. You gotta accept that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's he looking for pity, man. He's looking for pity, and, I, and that, that, I, that's what I'm saying. He's looking for pity. Ain't nobody feeling sorry for you, like man. Y'all feel sorry for me. Man. Nah, Mike McCarthy said y'all shouldn't feel sorry for him. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Everything, everything is magnified. Everything is under a microscope. Yeah. I want him to succeed. I remember, I know a guy. I think his name is uh, like Ocho Cinco. That, yeah, that's me, that's me. Oh, that's you? Yeah, that's me. This, uh, uh, Clay Matthews Jr. He had a lot of guys. Right. Every year we start the season. The Cowboys are the most talented team in the NFL, from top to bottom. Only the only the uh, Kansas City Chiefs 
have drafted more Pro Bowl players than the Dallas Cowboys. Right. Every single year, they win two games. This is a different team. We- All right. I-, I love it. I love it. Who was more talented? Michael Jackson or Prince? I need to know, man. I just want to segue into that. Who was more talented? Michael Jackson or Prince? I'm waiting for y'all to put that down. And for the newbies out there, you know, Prince was a guy that, hey, hey, you know, <laughs> and Purple Rain, Purple Rain was Prince, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 Prince. Ooh, Prince was talented, man. He can play every instrument. He can play every instrument. Michael Jackson was talented. Moonwalk got all type of awards, man. Even 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 did some cameos and some movies and stuff like that. But if you don't harness your talent to what you are talented at, it don't mean to heal the beings. Law, can you break it down? Prince was talented, but he wasn't a dancer. You get where I'm going? Oh my goodness, he wasn't a dancer like MJ. Hey, hey, you know? So when you start to look at talent, talent is only great at how you use said talent. There's people right now that's more talented than me. There's people right now that's more talented than the LeBron James, more talented than a Kobe probably. There are people that's literally probably was more talented than a Usain Bolt. There's people that's more talented than a Beyonce that can sing. So what I'm breaking down is talent by itself don't win you games. Philosophy and also being able to harness that talent and use it in a proper way. Marquise Bell is a very talented football player. At safety, he can get by a little bit at linebacker, but overall, he's not a linebacker. Give it what I'm saying. Oh my goodness, Michael Parsons is a very talented, one can argue, generational. But at 230 pounds on the edge, he's not going to win you consistently. Yeah, you can say, hey, man, I, my ideal, or my mindset is to get to 240, 235 at least. But, man, when you get down into the back end of the schedule, that four or five pounds that you gain during the offseason melts off like butter. That's not your natural spot. That's not where you belong. But can you fit a round peg in a square hole? Yes. You can shove it up in there. It get out. It get in there. Yeah, it get off in there. Fred Warner was drafted as a safety. D'Amico Ryan's. I'm talking about the freaking 49ers, by the way was a linebacker in the National Football League. He saw talent, he saw coverage ability, willingness to tackle, and he grabbed hold to Fred Warner's talent ability and said, hey, you 238 pounds? At the time, he was 230. Or 229, I believe. No, he was 229. They put a little weight on him and put him in the middle of the field and work within the confines of his own natural instincts. He's by far one of the better linebackers in the National Football League because someone saw said talent and they had the skill set to marry that up with what he can do and put him out there in the middle of the field. How much more would a Michael Parsons be if he had a D'Amico Ryans in his ear? Law, who did he have in his ear last season? A Scott McCurley. 
I said this, man, if I had my life on the line and somebody was coaching and I had the opportunity to have Scott McCurley or Jay Tuck, I'm going to sit back and say, hey, give me Jay Tuck. He no more linebacker than Scott McCurley and Darian Thompson. Do y'all get with what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? Mike says 225 people in here and only 93 likes. Oh, my God. It's a shame, huh? It's a shame. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Shame. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, it's all about seeing said talent. And jumping out and doing it. And getting it done. We've never seen a team, this a Cowboys team, this complete. They right. can run the football. They can throw the football. They can rush the passer. They can stop the running game. Every single year. And every single year I get to sit back here. <laughs> Told you. Mm. All right. And I, I, I just love busting down and breaking this up. Ah, law, these are excuses, man. We could run the ball. We didn't have no threat of the run. We didn't have that at all. We had guppy running. You see a guppy, you say, oh, man, that's a guppy. I'm not finna get up and jump up out of the pool or the water. That's a guppy. But if you see a shark, your first instinct, hey, man, let me get on up out of this water, man. Hey, man, that shark don't got no teeth. Man, he don't bite. Man, I ain't finna, finna, I ain't finna find out. He might gum me to death. I'm, 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 I'm. Nah, man. Hey, man, I seen that cartoon. Baby shark did do, 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 do. I'm getting up out of this one. No, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't have that. We had the guppy approach. Yeah, man, it's just a few fish in the pond, man. You stick your hand in there, they'll nibble on it, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you want to use animals as analogies and fish and fans and stuff. We were a one-fold team on offense and defense one fold I, I'll take that back a little bit on the defense we, we, we were we were a little two folded on defense whereas if we up by scores our edge rushers can get home and our DBs can bat the ball down and get the INT but we were for dog show one fold on offense Dak drops back, hit Lamb, hit Ferguson. That's about it. But no other element of, hey, play action can be involved. Oh, some hard run through A gap, B gap. No, oh, yeah, it wasn't none of that. No. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Pollock Guppy. He was coming back from an injury. Recovering. Rico, he caught a few swing passes in some games, but ultimately, if a team is sitting back saying, if Rico go kill us, let, let Rico kill us. You know what I'm saying? It's like sticking your finger in an aquarium. Oh, man, there's a little nibble there, nibble there, nibble there. You know, <laughs> very predictable. I ain't that right, Scorpio? To the degree, if Dak had a bad game, we lose him. Ain't nobody else can pick this team up. That's just how it is on, on offense. And it's been like that. How long has it been like that? Been like that forever, huh? I'm trying to figure out how long it's been. It's been like that. If Dak having a bad game, we lose him. You can't lean on nobody else. You can't lean on no run game. Since his rookie year, you can't name me a defining moment where you sit back 
And so I would give you Zeke. Zeke, 16. Because we for dog sure wouldn't beat. We wouldn't have beaten the Pittsburgh Steelers that year. Chicago Bears that year. I would say uh, the Vikings, they, they played us really rough that year. Yeah, 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 yeah. We probably wouldn't have beat the Eagles that year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Zeke, Zeke 16, 17, and, and uh, some some parts and variations of, of 18. I, I'll put that in there. But it's been Dak Prescott or Buss. Now, I will tell you guys this. Because I would not put this defense completely out. In 2022, defense was humming, man. Oh, my God. Oh, man, the defense was humming. Cooper Rush, oh, my goodness. We were humming that year. That was a year that, hey, in 2022, those four games that Cooper played in, minus the Eagles game, I believe, defense didn't allow over 20 points. It was scooping scores. They were taking stuff. And Tony Pollard with Zeke was running. They were running that year. So I will give you that. I will give you that. Yeah, yeah, we beat Pittsburgh in 16. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because of Zeke, Zeke. That that damn with Zeke in that that pass to Dez Bryant. And that's when that was the time when even Tony Romo was like, damn, I ain't getting my job back. <laughs> he was like, that's a dime. But we talking about eight years ago. That's a long time ago. All right. Damn, man, that's that, that that's that sucks though. Well, like, we the boys. That, Every that, year they take me to boys. That's we the boys. I mean, they they them boys, but I, I for me, from the Don't outside looking in, as a fan of the game of football, I want to see them achieve greatness. Not in the regular season. I want to see them achieve greatness in the postseason. I want Dak to succeed. Why do I want Dak to succeed? Because I understand. As a black quarterback, he's held at a different standard sometimes. Playing for that team with the star on his helmet. Yeah. Everything is different. Everything everything is magnified. Everything is under a microscope. Yeah. I want him to succeed. I remember I know a guy. I think his name is uh like Ocho Cinco. That yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> oh, that's you? <laughs> yeah, that's me. They're saying yeah, yeah. you don't care what the field is like, you don't care what's going on. You that boy, I got a mofo job to do. So right. I don't care what goes on. I don't care what the coach say. I got to do my job. Okay, now, that's now, I, was, you now, now I, I told you that in context of how I approach the game. And, yeah, and if, yeah, you, yeah. if you've watched me throughout the years, you understood that's exactly how I played. You say that's what other people should do. You oh, said, I, right, you right, said right. Right. that's what they got to buy. You got hype. I mean, you got animal. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 get, I, I get very passionate <laughs> about that about that topic. <laughs> I, get very I, I was so afraid. I was so afraid. I called nine one one. I said, "Look, I like the point. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, Ocho, I got free. I was right, scared. Right. I was like, oh, shit. I said, Ocho, go snap. That's how I felt, Ocho. I felt, I felt in danger. Right, because right. Because you snap. You My said, bad. I don't care. My I, bad. I, 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 I <laughs> you do your job. I said, Wow, Ocho, this me. I love, I love it. I think that quarterbacks in general versus wide receivers are two different worlds. Quarterbacks naturally are held to different standards of a wide receiver. I get with what Ocho is saying. I get with what Shea Sharp is saying. Regardless of it, man, those convinced against their will will always be of the same opinion still, right? And for those who never walked in those shoes, we'll never quantify those type of things, right? So all I'm going to say here is beyond the quarterback that plays for the Dallas Cowboys, you will always be scrutinized regardless, regardless of what 
you may think it could be. Now, will it be a little extra because he's Dak Prescott? Yeah, I get it. You know, I knew for a fact that even me sitting here for, you know, being a content creator from the from the vicious threats that I received, that wouldn't have been if it was a different quarterback. I get all of that. But then again, that's just how this world is. And you'll be a fool to think it's not. That's just how it is. They mad at they mad at Beyonce for singing country music, right? They're like, hey man, hey you thief, stop, stop, hey, you stealing our music, man. Thief, stop, thief, come back, thief. This is music, man. Sure, supposed to tap your soul and give you moving here and there, whether it's country, jazz, blues, whatever it may be. But that's just how it is. And not everybody's, not everybody can handle the heat that they receive. That's just how it goes. Some will fold, some will keep moving. That's just what it is. But neither here nor there, I get from both sides of what they're saying. And it will always be a continuum. That's why I, I, I say this too. <clears throat> the Dallas Cowboys, people don't like you or love you until you're gone. They they, they don't like you and, and love you until you're gone. Man, <clears throat> I remember Tony Romo, they used to dress up as Halloween costumes as Tony Romo. Cask and crutches and everything. As soon as he retired, well, he haven't retired yet. He's still making comeback, y'all, <laughs> for those who love Romo. When he was gone and everybody said, hey, man, I remember the Romo days. Man, that was the good days. I'm like, when? What year? <laughs> Where was those good years, man? Eight and eight, eight and eight. You win, you win. And we couldn't get in. If you think going to the playoffs and losing was bad, imagine winning, you win. And we still, at that time, people were saying, hey, man, this team is loaded with, with talent. They were saying it then. But there is a constant, that's re regardless of how you look at this, there's always been the common denominator. <laughs> Can y'all put his name down in the chat or their names down in the chat? A common denominator. Come on, baby. Oh, man, it was a common one, you know. Let's listen to this right here. Make it harder for him because we're not going to upgrade. What's your feelings on, on what Jerry Jones is doing with Dak Prescott? Right now, it seems like they're not going to give him a, con a new contract. We just saw Kirk Cousins, who is turning 36 years old this year and coming off of a torn Achilles, get four years and $180 million from the Atlanta Falcons. You don't think Dak Prescott, who was a top three quarterback <laughs> by just about every metric okay. last year, is going to get significantly more in free agency. There are people at home screaming, do it in the playoffs, and how can you? And I get that. I understand. But my question for them, what then? Who's going to play quarterback? Jerry Jones said he was going to be all in. They're going to go after it in free agency. They're going to go after <laughs> it in the draft. And really what he was saying was, hey, Dak, this is your last chance. You're saying... Dak Prescott, we're all in, this is it, he needs to prove himself, but we're gonna make it harder for him because we're not gonna upgrade our team. Two offensive linemen are leaving. Our lead running back at the moment is Rico Doubt. Like, I don't understand the logic there. Shout out to RG3 and the and the Wands, uh, Mina Kimes. Uh, she, she do a great job of breaking this down and giving, you know, some, some strong truths of everything. Um, <clears throat> I think ultimately the Jones want to win. They really do. They want to win. But want to and know how is two different things. You could want ice cream. You could want it. Oh, I want me some ice cream. But do you know how? Do you know how? To make ice cream from scratch. No. Oh, I want ice cream. Do you have the money to go buy it? This is my little my little one. I want ice cream. Do you have your money? Do you, do you have some money to go get it? Nope. You could want to, but do you know how? 
And that's where the issue been with the Cowboys. Trust and believe. I think they do a great job with the relationship with most of their players. They do a fantastic job of filling seats and keeping the environment nice and comfortable. You go to the you go to any of the events, you're not fanning yourself because it's hot. Food is so good. I mean, mmm, that pretzel was good. Fifteen dollars for a pretzel. It was good. Thirty dollars for 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 a little keg of beer. You know, it's good. That's great marketing. But do you really know how to win a Super Bowl? Do you really know how to not get emotional and wear things on your shoulders or or your sleeves and operate within the confines of your feelings? They don't know how to do that. They don't. And that is a finite problem with the Cowboys. Prism of Dax contract. Listen to this right here. Jeremy, this is all, of course, under the prism of Dax contract situation there in Dallas. What do we know? What's the latest? Well, Hannah, I talked to somebody directly with the team who said that the notion that the Cowboys don't want to re sign Dak Prescott after this year is false. They are going to try. Now, can they find common ground on the contract when Prescott has unprecedented leverage here? The 60 plus million dollar cap hit this year, dead money on the contract next year. It's going to be hard for them to do. But I do expect them to try. They still see Prescott as their long-term answer. They have Trey Lance as a developmental quarterback right now, but all off-season signals are that they're going to try to re-sign their big three at some point. Prescott, C.D. Lamb, Micah Parsons. So, Jerry- so I put in there, you know, I- I'm quite sure they want to sign the big three at some point. The time to sign C.D. was like in February or last year. As soon as C.D. Lamb would have broke that dog on Michael Irvin record, you know, as soon as he broke, let me crack your cranium and fertilize your brain. I was saying, CD, hey, come to my office right now. Hey, CD, what's going on? Hey, I got this contract and you can't leave until you sign. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can't leave until you sign right here on the dotted line. There wouldn't have been none, none of this going back and forward. And I'm going to tell you guys, they say, hey, law. Well, we didn't franchise tag no one this year. Well, I look at that fifth-year option as if it's a franchise tag. We are paying seventeen to eighteen million dollars because he's playing on the fifth-year option. You can't prorate that money. You can't spread it out. It had the same limitations of a franchise tag. <clears throat> You want to stretch and pull that money out. We're getting whooped on the contract parts of it. That's where we getting, that's where we losing our battles at. Even for those who don't even like or stand Dak Prescott. He got him by the short hairs. He's squeezing them every time. He got him by the contract. You can't trade them. And even if you try to let them walk, you're going to eat 40 million. The dude came off of an MVP second runner up. He's not the MVP, by the way, but his numbers put him in that category. He's an all pro. Whether or not you like it or not, he's an all pro. All of that goes onto the resume. Well, Law, did he win you any games in the postseason? Well, We can say that for 31 other teams because at the end of the day, Pat Mahomes, if your last name is not Mahomes or Stafford, you got really no room to talk. And Stafford was on a loaded team. (laughs) If Burroughs would have won that Super Bowl, it would have been more friendly with the mindset. Then people would say, hey, see, you need your first-round quarterback, you see. 
But for every Burroughs, there's a Trevor Lawrence. That's a Josh Rosen. You know what I'm saying? Sam Donald. The list goes on. Mitch Trubisky. Deshaun Kaiser. Kaiser, how have you say that man's name? So I, I think, I truly believe they want to win, but they just don't know how to win. Or they want to win it their way. Like Frank Sinatra, I want to do it my way, you know. Yeah, yeah. She going to get in on him. Let me, let me go to my guy Martin Talk. Martin Talk Cowboys, he had brought up this guy right here. It's more of an organization structure-wise issue with the Cowboys than less about Dak Prescott. Let's listen Dak to Dak Prescott overcome yeah uh, let's talk about a quarterback who nobody rushed out to draft in fact he went in the fourth round mm -hmm. Dak Prescott yeah and it seemed like it was a foregone conclusion that Dak Prescott was going to get a new deal with the Cowboys uh -huh. and we were hearing numbers like he could be the first 60 million dollar guy right. but now it seems like those contract talks have cooled and are we looking at the very real possibility of Dak Prescott being a free agent after next season I, I just don't I don't believe that they're going to let him hit the free agent market. And I know Dak takes a lot of grief. You know, a lot of people don't believe necessarily in Dak or the Cowboys. Um, I, I, I happen to be on the other side of that fence. I think Dak Prescott's a hell of a quarterback. Um, I think that guy has an old soul to him. I think he plays the game from the pocket exceptionally well um i think he throws the ball exceptionally well i just i just think that that's more organizational structure wise the issue with the cowboys and less about dak prescott now do i want to pay any quarterback 60 million bucks a year no probably not right um, right right but do i think he's an upper echelon super bowl championship caliber quarterback yes you know we always oh let's stop it right here how do you get in front of paying Dak Prescott before 60 million, before 40 to 45 million? You got to go early. You can't wait to the last minute to pay these guys. Just like with CeeDee Lamb, you got to go early, man. You got to be, when CD broke that record, you got to get in before Chase. You got to get in before, uh, what's smooth name? Uh, Jay Jetta. You got to get in before those boys. Glenn Caper says, if someone think Dak is the problem, they should be required to name the quarterback who wins the that Green Bay Packers game, basically. The problem is clearly coaching. Hey, man. <clears throat> Boy, it's layers of onions. It's layers of onions because on one end it is coaching. All right. But the fish rots from the head down, right? As above, so below. And when you have corruptions and when you have fallacies at the top, it trickles all the way down to the bottom. A man just don't wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to climb up to the Empire State Building and dive off of it. It's a series of issues and problems that happened and occurred in the life of that said person. So that's, that's the issue. I appreciate you for the super chat. So when we look at the structure, everyone is pretty much pointing it out. People are really pointing it out. Now, granted, I'm not beating up everything that they do. Even an evil man will give his child an egg, right? So what I'm saying is that we, organ the organization, they have some flawed ways on how they pursue. Now, is it tangible enough for us to win games? Yes. But is it tangible enough for us to win deep runs and playoffs? In Super Bowl. It's going to be difficult, baby. 
yeah 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 it's difficult so as as a fan all we can do is just still root for this team and support the best way we can and and know that you hopefully there'll be better days down the line and give us a little hope that's why i got the draft we need the draft because we that's all our resources right there that's all we got That's all we got is the draft. We get hope. There were no clear plan of getting C.D. Lamb. He fell to us. Because the Raiders was like, yeah, Henry Ruggs, boy, what did, what did Ruggs ran? <laughs> I'm glad that Lamb didn't run no 4-3 or something like that. If Lamb would have ran a 4-3 or even a low 4-4, he probably would have been gone, y'all. What did Lamb run? Like a 4-5 something? That's the only reason why we was able to get him. <laughs> oh, Rooks ran a 4-2? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Shoot. Was Al Davis still alive at that time? You know, I don't know. But they they they, they really was like, that's just how they operate. If you run fast, they gonna draft you, dog, you know. I think Al Davis was still was still still around. He could have been he could have passed away a couple years prior. But they still had that that philosophy shoot we gonna draft that yeah 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 <laughs> we gonna draft that please talk on our show with joel clatt from fox the lead college football analyst yep. and he always he always says to me um or us and I love this analogy. Does the guy pass the confetti test? And what he means by that is if I, can you see him hoisting up a Lombardi trophy and confetti fall on this guy's head? It's great, yeah. Cause it's great, like it's a great exercise. Yeah. And I've asked a couple of coaches, a couple of NFL coaches about their quarterbacks. I've asked them in meetings. That, really? Oh yeah, yeah. And, and have they given you honest answers that the fans of those teams probably wouldn't like yes they, but the answer is not that they answer it it's that they don't answer okay it. you can see them start they to go, squirm yeah, a little they bit go, yeah. oh uh, uh, ooh, uh boy mm, mm. look at the time yeah that's a uh, interesting <laughs> i've never uh brrr, thought of it that way and uh um, <laughs> you know you're like okay that's a no that's a Check, no right <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I like the Confederate uh, uh, test. Confetti test, I'm going to say. I say Confederate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Confetti test. But neither here nor there. Uh, it goes into the deep end there. Uh, we got Ruggs threw away his very promising career. I, I just think that Ruggs, man, you know, regardless of whether or not his career, if he was racing that car or not, you know, and he was under the influences there. I think that C.D. Lamb would still be better than him, right? But that's just what the Raiders do. I think that they did it before. They passed up Dez Bryant because Darius Haywood Bay, whatever his name was, he ran fast. <laughs> if Dez Bryant ran a 4-3 or 4-2, whatever, he would have been on the Raiders, dog. That's just how it goes. So it goes back to principles and philosophy. <laughs> David said Henry Riggs. Come on, man. Come on. Roll time, man. Come on. Ah, no. Come on. Don't do my guy like that, man. Don't do my guy like that. <laughs> but um, one, one, more, one more clip, and then we'll open up the phone lines. I got this clip right here. And shout out to Prize Picks. They're one of the uh, sponsors of this today's video. And you guys can do the same with Prize Picks. Download Prize Picks and use promo code LAW, and you can be in the mix here. I'm going to share this one right here with you. Hopefully, we can hit on this one. Uh, we got $400 down for to get 10, 10 racks. 
if we get 10 racks, man, shoot, we, we are all parlay and have a great time. So uh, use those picks right there. Sharing is caring. Uh, and if you look at it, I went with less with majority of these. I think I went with all less. Chris, we got MLB season, baby. And I don't think that he's going to have four strikeouts. You know, I hope he don't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then Michael, you know, I don't think that he's going to have five strikeouts. So I'm saying less. Max, Mayers, I'm going with him with less. I don't think he'll have five strikeouts. Chase, I'm going with less. I'm the less king over here today. I'm, I'm going with a philosophy that none of these guys going to have more than six strikes out for Lewis no more for Andrew. I don't think that he will have six. So, hey, check out Prize Picks. Use promo code LAW. I just shared mine's, and hopefully, man, if we can hit that ten racks, man, boy, we gon' we gonna be partying, yeah, baby. We gonna be partying. So, appreciate Prize Picks, and you can do the same. We got all type of different promos out here. Even got my guy. He he does a great job. A com- uh, very good comedian. Uh, when time permits, maybe I jump on the show with this dude, Marco. Well, you know what I'm saying? But he got his picks that you can select and you can pick from. You just place the order there, and then it'll push you right all the way through. And uh, and then you can go from there. You can put it in. I got a free entry of 100 bucks. But how you can get 100 bucks too, while we reading this promotion, promotion out, is also you can do the same. When you download Prize Pick and use promo code LAW, of your first $100 will be deposited to your account. So you can jump in with one hundo and then you'll have $200 to play around with. So, yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Action Power says he copied me. Hey, man, we, hey, hey, Action. Dog, man, you've been having that good, that good vibe going, man. Hope we all can have one, you know, by the end of the day. We'll let you know. I'll let you know and you would know for sure. But neither here nor there. Let's click on this last one right here. And I believe she roast him. You know, I believe she roast smooth so bad that he said, preach, bro. I'm sitting like, dude, you talking to a female, man. <laughs> That's a female. <laughs> hey, man, let's go. Let's listen to this one right here. But, but how many, to your point of he hasn't won the big game, how many quarterbacks have? How many active quarterbacks have won the big game? Well, I mean, we've got Patrick. Joe, Burrow's got, Joe Burrow's gotten it to a Super Bowl. Matt Stafford's got gotten to a Super Bowl. Um, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, obviously, we're we're not going to talk about him because three is on an elite level, even though he didn't have a good fantasy season. Uh, which My I will point, point out. Most no, no, I of get the, it, but I get most it. of them I haven't. Understand. Lamar hasn't. Uh, Justin Herbert certainly hasn't. Like uh, Josh Allen hasn't. Like if this is if this is the bar with which we're deciding whether or not quarterbacks come or go, like. I mean, wow. Like, and I would also argue you're saying it's been 30 years for the Cowboys. You know who hasn't been around for 30 years? Dak. So maybe there's some other systemic problem no that's happening within the Cowboys. No question. Um, i.e. the person who is their general manager, who I think personally, just my opinion, should not be the general manager anymore. Preach, so, Rhodes. Preach. So uh, I, I just, I have a hard time looking at this situation and thinking that we're not way overreacting in a way that is ultimately detrimental to your club. If you're going to look at what's happened with the Cowboys and place the blame squarely on Dak, Dak statistically last year led the NFL with 36 touchdown passes. Now, obviously partially that has to do with the situation around him. The quarterback doesn't get credit for every offensive stat, right? But like there were 36 passing touchdowns. So it was the most in the NFL. He only threw nine interceptions. That's incredible. That touchdown to interception great. ratio, right? He was third in passing yards. Uh, he was third best in expected points added per play for the quarterbacks. He had the third highest passing grade for a quarterback. He had the fourth highest offensive grade for a quarterback. So are we having a discussion where we say Dak is not a good enough quarterback? Or the team, while Dak Prescott has been the quarterback, hasn't been good enough to win a Super Bowl? Ooh wee, jeez! She cooked him so bad. He said, "Hey, bro, preach, bro." But I, I would say this. Uh, <laughs> I would say this though. Stats doesn't tell the complete storyline, and I get all of that. People will say, "Hey, empty calorie stats," you know, garbage time stats, which those should all be coined by the Cowboys because nobody else have garbage time stats or empty calorie stats, right? 
<laughs> I remember one year that, you know, the Houston Texans had a quarterback by the name of Deshaun Watson, right? Oh, he put up some good numbers. Nobody was talking about, hey, man, they was behind. You know, that's why they putting up all those good numbers. <laughs> but that, that's only a quantify or that's only accounted for for the Dallas Cowboys. But neither here nor there. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate everybody for tuning in. We will open up to your open up the discussions for you all to jump in. I uh, hope all is well. I uh, hope that you guys had a wonderful uh, weekend and these sorts of things. and got a chance to hang out with friends and family and beyond. It's always great uh, for the Cowboy family and friends to to have a great time. And, and thank for those who bumped into me and said, hey, man, you know, hey, you Law Nation, man. I've watched your show, man. And we, hey, keep up the great work. I ran up a check, I might do it again. Enemies close, have me thinking they're friends. Ten toes down, I'll be free until the end. Crib outside the city, I don't feel yeah. safe in my ass. Took so many years, I'm just waiting for the wins. I'm in debt to no one but the one who's Six five seven three nine oh seven three nine one is the hotline for your mind. Let's get it. I'm just doing me, baby. From D21, folk. You're live on the nation. Brought to you by Prize Picture in the Mix. Talk to me. Hello, I wanted to know from your perspective what does Mike McCarthy actually do well? Like, what does he do tangibly that you can see and you can say, this is his effect on this team? Because I can do that with Dan Quinn, and I will. Because I know people are going to be like, I will. When Dan Quinn, his first year, when he got here, he changed the whole philosophy and the whole identity of the whole team. He brought in hella safeties. He brought right. in a, a few linebackers or so. Um, he started digging deep into the talent that we actually had on the defensive side. Uh, a guy like Doris Armstrong, I think Doris Armstrong, he was here uh, before then. Doris Armstrong wasn't living up to his fullest potential, but then once Dan Quinn put his fingerprints on him, he changed. And so without Dan Quinn, Mike McCarthy had his fingerprints on his team. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And and we saw what that was. So I can, t I can identify exactly Dan Quinn's fingerprints on his team as a defensive coordinator. So I want to know from your perspective, what does Mike McCarthy actually do well that you can identify tangibly tangibly all right so with that being said and i'm glad that you mentioned that he can keep the quarterback consistency play together this team uh with dak prescott under center with mike mccarthy became an all pro he can't say that for any other year with dak prescott also with uh, mike mccarthy even though we can uh quantify or add to, yeah, that better be, that's a better way to say that. We can add to the fact that, yeah, it could be, you can say for those five games that Dak Prescott wasn't here, that, you know, the defense played a major role with that, but you got to give credit to the head coach with that. This is the first time ever in Cowboys history uh, since 95 that we had a backup quarterback to come in and to help keep things afloat. So we can look at it from with Mike McCarthy since he's been because here. Of Mike McCarthy? Because of Mike McCarthy, we still kept things afloat. On top of that, we can look at it and say, yeah, the defense was there in those games, but you still got to add in the fact that the quarterback itself didn't turn it over and didn't wasn't the finite reasons for us to lose in those games as well. So you got to give credit to where credit is due on both sides of the coin. You just can't lean heavy on one. The, re the reason why I do lean heavy on one is because it was Dan Quinn's defense that held up and became like because of Dan Qu without I, I don't believe without Dan Quinn's defense and without Dan Quinn being here I don't think that once Dak Prescott went down and Cooper Rush came in without that defense I don't think we win as many games as we did. But we, that's well, well, we, we, we can I'm add it. We can we can add in the fact that you know we all know that Parsons is generational talent, right? So Parsons that's played Parsons. A, Parsons played a role in that as well as Trayvon Diggs. Both of those guys, Trayvon Diggs was coming along his way 
before Dan Quinn got here, right? Because he had four INTs his rookie season. So Trayvon Diggs was already heading into that greatness of being who he is. Now, granted, we can all identify that that with since Dan Quinn been here, Parsons was the guy that that that, that we can say we don't know it was he going to be who he is with or without Parsons right I don't know so we will finally see that this year but name me someone else outside of Parsons that Dan Quinn had his fingerprints on J. Ron Curse don't like don't sleep on now I know it's a hate man, trail, hey, hey, man Curse, ain't right? nobody fighting for Curse for the wait, last two whoa, seasons whoa, 2021 2021 yeah but 2022 and 20 I knew I was gonna get some uh, back on that I knew I, I would Law. you had to you stop. had to Bruh, you had to y'all gotta stop the cap yeah so so now y'all gonna turn up Remember oh when yeah, Curse first, you, you, first, man, come man, on man, now. man, come on, man. Come hey, on. and then Curse himself, he would be a prodigy of uh, what's the smooth name? Uh, uh, they got the uh, job now. This assistant. That's why they made him the assistant head coach. What's his name? The tip of my tongue. Al Harris. That's secondary. Quinn, Quinn, Quinn. If you if you go to practice and you go to training camp Quinn never absolutely touched or even was in the room with the secondary uh, players that's all Al Harris and the other smooth uh, uh, Joe Witt Jr. Quinn had his hands on the D-line and linebackers that's, that's, that was his forte but keep going I can give you J. Ron Curse. Okay. I can give you Malik. I can give you Malik Hooker. Even though Malik Hooker was already Malik Hooker before he got here, and he was a better version of Malik Hooker <laughs> before he got here when he was when he played for the Colts. I can give you Malik Hooker. I can give you uh, Doris Armstrong. I can give you Sam Williams. Even though Sam Williams does do dumb things, Sam Williams is absolutely a Dan Quinn guy. Am I right or wrong? Because right or wrong. Sam Sam we, Williams. Sam Williams is, is, a, is a good guy. I think that he, here's the problem with Sam Williams. He's ultimately was the guy that Dan Quinn handpicked, but also he was an, also one of Dan Quinn guys last season. <laughs> he couldn't even get on the field. We had D.A. and we had Fowler getting the majority of those snaps there. Oh, um, boy, you segue, hell of a segue. Another one, Fowler. We like Fowler, don't we? Will we would wouldn't we say that's a Dan Quinn guy because he's from the Falcons? Who let us who who let us down the most? Come in the on, last, you who, know I'm cooking who let us no 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 who Come let on. us down the well shoot last season who let us down the most in the playoffs the offense or the defense? You know what? This is what I'm gonna say. Neither neither the offense or the defense played well. The whole team was ass cheeks. Yeah, it was ass cheeks. Like I, I know, yeah. I know, I know. We like to blame the defense, but bro, the whole team was trash. But the but energy, I just had to push the, back. I just had to push back right here. Here you are at home. And you've been battling, you've been you've been banging on your chest that this is a, a defensive team. We get to the home in AT and T Stadium, home, and you see, in the Green Bay. They march 80 yards down the field to score on us with the seven. Made it seven to zero. That's seven points. That's, That's seven, only points. seven points. Still, and then they do it again. Whole, they do it. They, they do another 80 yard drive for seven. It's 14 to nothing. Boy, I mean, they were sweating. This offense was sweat. And granted, the offense didn't help us out at all. By the way, because Zero. we couldn't even we couldn't even 20, get to the down. we couldn't even get to the down. fifty yard line, bro. We couldn't even get we couldn't even get into Brandon Aubrey foot range. So I, I get it. Both <laughs> both that's, sides that's a, both sides are, 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 are terrible. Dan Quinn, if you had to give me a choice between Dan Quinn and Mike McCarthy, that is both equally being a bad situation but more than likely more than likely at least somewhere and of course i can see that the uh green bay packers probably let their foot up off the gas but at least who fought more <laughs> the offense at least fought a little bit more than the defense can i get my credit on schoolmaker because because i see how you talk about him now who who hit it first Damn. come on <laughs> Come on. Who said it first? Who said it first, Law? <laughs> hey, hey, you already know my saying. Give him grace and mercy. <laughs> hey, that cornbread. Hey, how that cornbread? 
How they cornbread hey, looking? Hey, man, you better scrape the top off of it, man. Okay. Look, I'm going to tell you, it's, burnt, it's a burnt cornbread. But, hey, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we all didn't like the pick. Not like I was banging on the table for Luke Schoolmaker. Mm-hmm. Was I banging well, on the table? I wasn't banging well. on the table. I said, hey, we're just going to have to make do with what we got. I can't complain about spilled milk. But he did. Who had a better uh, year one, Jalen Hyatt or Luke Schoolmaker? I mean, they both was, you know, relatively. But I will say Jalen Hyatt <laughs> has a way higher uh, ceiling. He yeah. belongs a second-round pick. I'm going to stand on that for yeah. sure. And we would have did better with Jalen Hyatt rather than uh, Michael Gallo. You oh, feel true, me? True, 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 true. So true, I'm going to say true. that. I mean, you want you want that argument. That's why I hey, did I give you what a hundred and fifty dollars? You want something else too? Yeah, hey, well, not, I'm, well, I'm not. I'm not. not finna, you finna rob me. Part. You're not finna rob me now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna <laughs> have you to get, to fleece me now. Come on, bro. <laughs> I just wanted my credit. That's all. That's it. You know. Yeah, yeah. You get you get your flowers, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it, even if you want to win on this debate, you know, far as Quinn and Mike McCarthy, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Because Dan Quinn, at least, he did have a little bit more of a wiggle room. I just think that what ultimately happened with Dan Quinn is that he seen himself in this role as being the head coach. Okay. You see, you get where I'm going at? Because well, he, he, he literally did, was did the head coach. The he, he, he did offer the leave, remember? <laughs> with, with Mike. Remember he did. That? He did. But Come on. I just think that Mike McCarthy, if a person thought about leaving, you let him go. And I think that if a person really want to be, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I get, can I use an analogy? It's like, it's like Dan, it's like Dan Quinn was that dude that was checking out Mike McCarthy's lady. You know what I'm saying? Every time she turned okay. around, he was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, she got a little bit back there. I don't know. And if given the opportunity, yeah. if given the opportunity, he would have smashed. But he never got the oh, opportunity. Man. So that's just what it was. And it's, that, that's clearly from what I can see. Dan Quinn, all the way into week, I believe, six, he was a shoe in of being the head coach here. But after week five or what have you, and week six and week seven and week eight, Mike that. McCarthy started saying, you know what, I'm just going to let this offense open all the way and, up. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. I, bro, you right about that part, and I give you that. Yep. Because after that 49ers loss, yeah, we seen a whole nother offense. After yep. that. And yep. we should have. Yep. Because his ass is going to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been Dan Quinn's team, you know. And maybe we would have had the, uh, what's that offensive coordinator that the Washington got? Would you like that? Kingsbury, uh, Cliff Kingsbury. Oh, Ki- uh, I don't know about him. I don't know about him. He got he gonna have to prove himself a little bit more. We'll see. We'll, we'll see how the Washington team look, man. I appreciate you calling in, Darius. Yeah, uh, you might have right. made me sweat just a little bit, man. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit. I, I had to get back on my toes, man. <laughs> okay, okay. And by the way, I know what a couple of four is. I know you talking oh, to oh, my boy in the oh, blender uh, when the old boy called in. I'm like, dang, man, he was hitting my. You, you had to do my boy like that, man. Yeah, to coach him up, man. Uh, he's still yeah. looking up. What's cover four, cover three? If I if I'd have said nickel, that that would have buried him. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. Thank you, man. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. A good call from Darius, man. Yeah, he had me a little bit, but I I stood I stood my ground, held my ground though a little bit, y'all. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, both both situations was terrible, and it goes back to even what. It goes back to even what Shay Sharp said, you know. You don't feel bad for a man having a pet snake and a pet snake bite him or a lion and end up biting him. You shouldn't feel bad for that. But we can all clearly see that Dan Quinn was more likable with the Jones family. He, he got a chance to get more of his toys with the Jones family. And uh, Mike McCarthy, he was always, Mike McCarthy been on the hot seat since 2020. There was literally, you guys can rewind some of my tapes and you can literally see. The conference has been locked. That people were saying, hey man, time wasn't this bad even with, with, with Jason Garrett. 
in 2020, people are like, hey, bring us back Jason Garrett. You know, Sugar Daddy one William says member for 26 months, level silver, uh, level one. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, man. Uh, I got from the 912, you in. 912, 912, you live. Hey, Law. What's up? How you doing? Can you hear me? Hey, man, I can hear you, fam. Talk to me. Yeah, this is Bruce Keel out of 912, Savannah, Georgia. Georgia in the house, man. Talk to me, man. Yeah, man, I, long time listener, man, first time caller. Uh, you probably ain't going to let me call back again when I get through with this. With these two, three things I want to talk about right quick, but go ahead. Number one, uh, they talking about. I've been listening to y'all talk about Dak, and maybe he may walk. Uh, you remember when uh, Dan Quinn coached that one game when McCarthy was out? Uh, what game was it? I I I, I can't recall. It was it was the what was it? He got stomach. McCarthy yeah. was out. Yeah, yeah, he had a stomach situation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, well, they won that game. And, you know, at that time, I believe Dan Quinn thought for sure that, you know, Jerry would look at him and give him a chance. But I'm going to throw this one at you. If Dak walked, you got – if Washington even picked a quarterback in the draft, they still might let him sit for a couple of years. Quinn – We'll accept that Washington got the money, but I'm gonna throw this other this other jab at you. What about Boy Wonder in Philadelphia? Jack throw some good passes, had some good completed yards and stuff like that. Now I'm a diehard Cowboy fan, and I love Dak to death. I really do. I hate all this talking about him and stuff like that. But wouldn't that be something if he go into the division? and turn around and win a Super Bowl. Well, there's only two teams that, that would need a quarterback uh, right now would be the Giants and the Washington team. Uh, the Cowboys, regardless of it, you know, Dak Prescott got the no-trade clause, and it's, it's, right. it's cheaper to keep a, you know, type of deal. That I don't think that they will cut an all-pro. It will be the first time in NFL history that they will cut an all-pro you know, for going 12 and 5, 12 and 5, 12 and 5 and cut them, you know, and say, okay, well, we'll go in with Trey Lance and Cooper Rush. I don't think that they would do that. I think that ultimately what the Cowboys are going to do is they're going to wait it out and they're going to sign them late. They they tend to fold. They tend to fold. They folded on D-Law. They folded on Dez Bryant contract. They folded on uh, Ezekiel Elliott contract. So they, they are folders, man. They're going to fold eventually. And what we've been right. saying is that why let it get to that point? Go ahead and, and, and extend these guys and, and re-up these guys and bring in some premium stuff because when, the longer you wait, the higher that bill becomes. And that's been the ultimate reason why the Cowboys been four or five years behind other teams. Although we talented enough to win, but it's not win, winnable enough to win in the uh, postseason. From from there, you know, yeah. it's moved too slow. You know, we had a time even when yeah. where, where Romo was here, we had a time to get Peppers. We had a time to, right. Ju- Julius Peppers, uh, the edge rusher that played for the Green Bay Packers. I remember vividly banging on the table, and they was like, "No, nah, we like our guys. They love Anthony Spencer. Mm-hmm. You know, they love those boys." And when you go to the super, when you go to the playoffs, you still need that alpha kind of caliber of energy in a male to be out there to snap something and make something happen. And lo and behold, in that playoff game in 2014, the person that made the pivotal play are those kind of caliber of veteran players who forced that fumble on DeMarco Murray. People talk about the catch, no catch, but that was the ultimate play. Peppers forcing the fumble on DeMarco Murray and it changed the momentum of that game. You need playmakers ultimate to ultimately to make things happen. And the Cowboys just don't right. do that. Well, I one thing about it too, you know, I feel like we all take the team to heart. I love them to death, don't get me wrong. I just like when you went out to Oxnard and uh what homeboy name was that was a receiver that went to Houston. 
Dennis, uh, Dennis um, Houston? Oh, no, Houston. Uh, no, he went to the Houston Texans. Wide receiver. Noah Houston Brown, player. Noah Brown, Noah Brown. Noah Brown. When you was out there, no, no, Noah Brown had a, a phenomenal uh, training camp. And I was at the game in Jacksonville when they played Jacksonville when Dak throwed and interception. And, I mean, it just goes to show you how he tries. And the thing about Dak is he want to be in Dallas. He don't want, that's the thing. Everybody want him. I want him to lead, but the only reason I want him to lead because I know he'll do better. And I, yeah. I just hate the way they're doing him. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. but let me throw this at you because I'm going to let you go. I'm a truck driver. I'm out okay. here on the road now. Man. Uh-huh. I'm trying to, trying to get down this road. But anyway, you know, the, uh, Jerry is better than crack. He better than McDonald's. If all the, he have had all of us coming like this for years. <laughs> And <laughs> think about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we all in, <laughs> we're all in love with it. How many I've sit on but, this road? But, but, but to be night. real though, but to huh? be real though, uh, you 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 sound like you're older than me, right? I am. I was born in '61, man. So I, so so when did you fell Miami, in love with this team? When you fell in love with this team? I fell I fell in love with this team after the Miami Dolphins lost their first game after they had their straight. Uh, back then, what it was, twelve or thirteen. So, games. so, 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 there's nothing that Jerry Jones can do to change your love for this team. Unfortunately, no. You fell in love no. with this team before he bought the team, so you're not going anywhere. And 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 I'm that's just what nowhere. it is. That's just what it is. I'm, so, so you stuck yeah. right now. You in purgatory, man. Yeah. <laughs> you need it in heaven I, or right. hell. You I, know. <laughs> I've heard about this boy Cotton and stuff like that, but man, let me tell you something. Right. Once. Them, them, them. Look, the Joneses done made their money. All this fussing and arguing and everything about what they do and what they ain't doing or whatever, boycotting is not going to hurt the bottom line with no, them. No, no, Okay? No. long as he got advertisement, all kind of other things that's coming with jersey sales and all, don't get me wrong. Yeah, if they win a Super Bowl, the players going to have to do it. You understand what I'm saying? It was what they, that's what they had to do in '95. They said they had to win in right. spite of the coaches. In spite of the coaches, yeah, but but know. now now it's double. You got to win in spite of the coaching, plus the owners. Uh, so so the problem right. is is that when you're in that spot, you see Troy had resources that he can pull from. He had references mm-hmm. that he can pull from Jimmy. These right. guys, all of the people that's on this team. They don't have references or resources they can pull from. Right, right. They got a coach who's got one foot in, one foot out. They got an owner right now that that, that empowers a guy that that these things are overlapping. Like Ferguson can really say, man, Zill, F you, and McCarthy, F you. (laughs) I'm going to be here longer than you. My contract says so, you know. So so you got those type of things that could happen. And I'm not saying that that he would have that mindset, but that's just how the things go. And anybody that that have been in any shape, form, or fashion in business, they know that you can get away with a lot of things if you know that someone else contract expiring and yours not. I appreciate you so much for calling in, fam. All right, bro. Hey, I appreciate it too, man. And I love you to death. Continue your good work. Most certainly, man. Appreciate you. Much love to you as well. It's from the 912. And, and I hope that you guys are getting for what I'm saying. You know, you know, that's just how it goes, man. I, I remember, I remember growing up watching Mighty Ducks. And there was this guy, I forgot his name. That they all fought for him. They all played for him. But when they realized that, hey, he had an opportunity to go back and do something else, it kind of hurt them. It crushed them. Ultimately, they thought that, hey, their leader wasn't going to be there anymore. That took the morale out the building. And if Jerry can't see that, man, and I'm not saying that, you know, movies don't, don't paint a picture of the real realness, but they do. These players, man, they understand. Coach Bombay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, still them boys, Kevin Hicks. Coach Bombay. They felt crushed, man, when he said, hey, man, I'm finna. they thought that he was going to take another job. I think that that's probably what happened with this defense. 
like, man, damn, Coach, Coach Quinn is already he he already whispering to Al Harris and Joe Witt Jr. that hey, you know, if if he take this other job, he 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 gonna um, pull these guys. But man, I just purchased this house, man. Coach, we finna lose, Coach, man. Hey, man, we finna lose, Coach, man. This is how it is. From the 203, you're live on the nation, brought to you by Prize Picks in the mix. Talk to me. Lord Nation, peace, brother. Peace, brother. Peace, peace to you. Yeah, I don't get a chance, man, to catch you live as much as I would like to, but I do, you know, I, yo, man, you handle your business so brilliant, you, brilliantly. I appreciate that. That uh, every chance I get to, 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 to call in to you, I do. But look, man. We're in a sad situation as far as the Cowboy Nation, man. <laughs> we are, I've been man. a Cowboy fan. I've been a Cowboy fan since uh, 81. That was okay. my first and my only team. I seen the star on the helmet. That's all I needed to see, man. I was yeah. all in. Yeah. Hey, man, Jerry Jones, the whole function of our ownership in general, they, they're inept at this point. Because the definition of insanity is trying to do something over and over. And I, I truly, I feel bad for all of us as we ride this uh, roller coaster that yeah. really goes nowhere. People want to jump on Dak. I keep saying it's not Dak. Two things you need to pack in the, in the playoffs. You need to pack. And the, the, the video you did uh, a, a, a couple of days ago, Lord, when I got a chance to check that out, man, I had to share it to another Cowboy fan. My Appreciate brother. it. Appreciate when it. you talked about, yes, sir. When you talked about the run game and the dude, I can't stand Colin Coward either, man. Yeah, I, I can't, can't stand, stand these man. suckers. <laughs> but the way you show that helps people, you should help people understand, like, that was never projected to come in and be a Patrick Mahomes or right. be a, a Tom Brady or any of these guys. You know what I mean? Right. And when he has a run game, the dude is phenomenal. And it's unfortunate that our co we, we since Jimmy Johnson, we haven't had a coaching staff that was able to be a coaching staff without being interfered with by Jerry and Catboy, his son. It's just totally dysfunctional, man. So I just, you know, I want to say it, it, it just make it a hard. It just make it harder, man. Uh, we well, like like you said, you 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 fell in love with this team before they even bought the team, right? When he was trying to purchase the, the, the Chargers. And we're not saying that Jerry is all at fault because grandfa my grandmother used to say there's people in hell with great intentions, right? They had good intentions of what they were trying to do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, things didn't work out that way. Jerry Jones ultimately may want to make an apple pie, but he's going mm -hmm. about it the wrong way. He's trying to make oranges and, and turn it into apple pies. He's not looking up the right it's ingredients. And, and when we look at everything, yes, he's the man with all of the money and all of the charisma and all of the uh, things that he innovative and, and doing things. And we can say, ultimately, that is the right way to do it. But it's not giving us the results that we're looking for. This is an orange apple pie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they don't got the apples in there. Like, where the apples at, bro? You know? So that's just what it is. The whole thing is with Dak Prescott is what they supposed to done was in the 2018, they supposed to re-up his contract then. But by them having that right. reservation, they allow him to play on the end of his contract in 2019, and he scorched them. His numbers you, right. you, you don't base it off, do you want? Do you win the Super Bowl? Do you win the playoff game? No, you base it off numbers. And they allow right. Carson Wentz, Golf, and all of those other boys to get paid before him. So naturally, he was like, hey, you know, it's my turn. In order for you to get me at 25, you had to pay me on the front end. But by them waiting, you, you, had, to, you, you the had to pay him yep. more. That just that, – that's just like the housing market. You know, you can't buy a house and then say, okay, I'm going to wait for these other houses to sell and expect your house to be cheaper now. You know, no, it's going to be right. the, the average market. But keep going, keep going, keep going. No, I just, I just think a, a lot of people, they look at the Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys, and they don't understand football totally. True. They don't understand True. football. 
football is the ultimate team sport. The wide receivers are only good as the quarterback. The quarterback only good as his offensive line. It's only good as the running back. It's only good as the defense going to be because you let them get the rest because you running the ball and you – everything works in unison. Dak yeah. Prescott hasn't had no consistency with this. Somebody, when, we first, when he first came in, we were pounding the ball. He was play-acting pass. He'll tear you apart. Then he had to change offensive coordinators. Then he had to change head coaches. Then he got Coach Clapp that didn't know how to coach at all because Jerry Jones and them didn't want to know how to change that. Right. It's crazy, man. Uh, it's, a, it's a cycling, bro. But all, all we can do now, man, is uh, hope for the draft to come around. And and I, I, look at the, I look at the total structure of this team. Call me crazy. It's not like we need a lot, though. We just need a few pieces to hit. You just need a few but pieces to hit, bro. But that's if other dudes step in, right, Lou? <laughs> right? Yeah, it, yeah, that's yeah, if yeah. other guys step up, right? You know? It, yeah. Who knows? I believe Who knows? in Sam Williams. I believe that Zimmer is going to get a hold of Sam Williams. And, I, and I'm and I'm going to hop off. I'm going to yeah. hop off. I ain't going to try to monopolize. But this is what I don't like. I don't like Mike McCarthy coming in. I believe in Dan Quinn so much. I believe in Mike McCarthy. But where is the run game that you talked about, bro? Sometimes it doesn't matter. You don't always have to get four yards of carry. You can have a game where your running back is only getting two yards of carry. But if you're giving him 30 carries in that game, the defense has to honor the fact that the running back is getting the ball, which then is going to open up the pass lanes for the quarterback, man. They don't, you know, people don't understand it, you know. Yeah. But, uh, we got to stick together, Cowboy Nation, and support each other because everybody else is always going to be coming for us, man. No so, doubt, man. Lord Nation, you do an excellent job, brother. You a warrior. You a true warrior, brother. I feel your energy and your spirit. I'm all the way on the East Coast, New Haven, Connecticut. I got more people trying to jump on and watch you, man, because the job you do is phenomenal, bro. And I'll definitely be supporting you, man. Much love to you. Much love family. to you, man. Let me hear you say it, though, bro. How about them boys? How about them, man? From the 203, man, East Coast, man. Uh, I, I just got to say this, man. That's what we've been all saying. Like, we make, we make knee-jerk decisions every year when it's time to, like, We, we got to start building upon the things that we do great at and minimizes the things that we do bad at. And we got to move swiftly, but with calculations. The time that you saw the regressions, even with Ezekiel Elliott run, that's what's the, that's what's the time when you utilize Pollard a little bit more to be the split back situation. There have been too many games, even then, that we've seen the tote heavy of it not being split. And we would talk and argue into the mic about this should happen, that should happen. The time in week three last year, moving, moving a little bit further out of, the, uh, out of that era, week three last year, the time that we couldn't stop the run then should have been the time we pick up the phone to bring in a linebacker, right? And say, hey, we got bad tape out there. I get it. We lost Trayvon Diggs, and it was a lot of emotions going on. But Trayvon Diggs, with him or without him, they were running the ball on us. We need to have bigger bodies to, to stop the run. That's a flaw in our system. All I want you guys to, to do is you may not like everything that I'm saying, but nine times out of ten, if you just slow down and listen, you will see the things that I'm saying are very, very much so true and true. I'm not like even with the Dak Prescott thing. If you pick Dak Prescott and move him out the way, we still have these core issues. The inability to stop the run and the inability to run the ball is what I'm saying. And if you look at Dak Prescott accolades and what he was able to do, 
you still got to put and position him from the NFC side as by far if he's not the number one or the best quarterback in the NFC is how hard would it be for you to find another quarterback to trump what he's able to do and also alleviate some of the things that we're not capable of doing of running the ball and stopping the run. So that's what I'm saying ultimately. With or without Dak Prescott, you start, you still got to do and build your team properly to run the ball and stop the run. In this draft, you, you got to figure out ways to hit guys that's going to be able to be an immediate impact. Why? It's because we ultimately don't dance around in free agency. You see, and now if you don't do that in free agents, how this goes and how this operates, you pick up your needs in free agency. You pick up your wants in the draft by doing BPA, best player available. But by it being that we don't dance around in free agency, it's going to be that this draft is going to be nothing but pure needs. And that's a hope and a wish. We hope that that center from whatever college can fit into a 17-week schedule and won't hit a rookie curve or a rookie wall midway through the season. We hope that that defensive guy that we get as a rookie can be dynamite. Because we draft him from a position of need instead of a position of, hey, I, I would like to have this guy. All right, I got um, from the 916, you in the mix, you're live on the nation, brought to you by Prize Picks. Talk to me. Hello? Yes, what's good? Yo, what's up, Lance? Hey, all is well. I can't complain. All right, this is my first time calling in. I'm out here from California, man. I just uh, wanted to see what you think about um, just playing out the contract for Jack Prescott and just um, actually drafting in the draft, pick up the pieces that we see what we could get for, for him to make it, if possible. If not, just let the... Um, the contract right now and just see what Trey Lance can do and basically get the pieces for him to do it himself. What do you think? So so let, let me uh, see if I can break down what you're saying. You, you're saying that so – can you just repeat that again? I, I didn't get the first part of the conversation you were saying. Yeah, I was just uh, saying like letting that Chris Paul's contract went out. Oh, letting his contract uh, run out. Okay, okay. I, yeah. I, I, I got, I got, I got, I got, it. I got you now. So you saying let it run out? Um, you just, we already taking the fifty five million dollar hit now, right? And then uh, next season you hit the forty million, which by standard that's pretty much what you know most people are paying for their quarterback that's on that scale right there. So we looking at Trey Lance. This is a contract year for him. So at his base, Trey, you're going to pay him, what, a one-year deal? That's 22 to $25 million. That would be crazy. Um, if you give him a long-term contract, it's a, his APY is going to be anywhere between 20 or $30 million APY, depending on you know how his agents kind of wrap up things. And you still got the forty million dollar hit for the twenty twenty five. So you're looking at paying sixty million dollars regardless. But I do get it. You know, if you want to move on from Dak Prescott and let him walk, because you get nothing back in return because of the no trade clause on his contract. I get all of that. So that's to me. To me, is going to be crazy because. I, I foresee Dak Prescott playing at either the same or better than what he played at last season. Do you see the same? Yeah, I don't think he'll do any better because if they can't get the run going uh, or if they can't get him like a player to make him take off, I don't see him going further than that. So I would say just uh, better run now, uh, sign CeeDee Lamb, uh, extend him and 
well, basically, CZ Lamb has been playing with uh, multiple kind of quarterbacks. So I think he can do something with Trey Lamb, if uh, possible, and also continue to improve the defense. So extend Micah, improve that part, and just uh, build up the the run game to stop the run also as well. So you got to get your linebacker, and also you got to give yourself a good line. Like, so like say, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, though. So, what, what you're banging on or, or, or trying to lean into is that if Dak Prescott put up all pro numbers, and I know numbers are just numbers, so he's giving you about 36 to 30, maybe eight touchdowns and eight to inter- eight to nine interceptions, right? You are you are banging on or hoping that he don't win you playoff games because if he don't win you playoff games then that would be the reason for you to let him walk but if we somehow win multiple playoff games you'll keep him right that'll be hard to say because if he can win multiple games that might at least get you to the nfc with uh with what he needs and he can't still do it well i'm just saying next man up yeah i i see that that's that's a conundrum because when we look at everything and we say to ourselves, okay, we get to the playoff games, we're going to pin the loss on the quarterback. And, of course, if we won, you pin the win on him. I get I get all of that. But the problem is is with that is that you're going to have to wait all off season, all through the season, for him to ultimately fail or, fa- or, or fail a success. So what, what world that we are all painting is basically Super Bowl or bust. For Dak Prescott, basically, yeah. <laughs> man, that's, that's, a, that's a hard pill. That's a tough pill to swallow, right there. Because, and I give it what you're saying, and I give it what most people are 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 thinking at this moment. But at the at the end of the day, I don't foresee that happening, either on on both ends of the spectrum, meaning that on one end we we got less talent on this team, right? And we were not able to 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 get less talent far as the other teams of going out there making that active free agent move, right? Whether it be defense or offense, right? So by nature, before the draft, we have less talent, right? And we have the expectations to do more than what we had last season. That's tough right there. I would say it would have been better if the Jones family don't ultimately believe in Dak Prescott is to see, figure out, talk to his agent and say, hey, let's just go ahead and get this done with now before going into this whole entire season waiting on this man to fail. You know, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. I, I, I don't have no other way to say this, though, from the 916. I don't have no other way to say this. Yeah, just, um, I'm just looking like a, at the bigger picture because if we just uh, believe that he could do it and just continue to pay him more money, well, what about the rest of the team? What about uh, having them make their money by displaying their talent? Did Did you make more money than you made last year, this year? Are you willing to make more money, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, right? So, yeah, have, so yeah. here, here, here's how it goes. Every year, the expectation for not just this quarterback – but for all of the quarterbacks and all of the players to make more money. That's why it's, it's called money, my need. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. The only way the Cowboys could have paid Dak Prescott less money if they would have paid him more money before Jalen Hurts got his money, before Justin Herbert got his money. They would have to get in front of the market. You can't allow other people to get into the market and then expect for, for, for you yourself, your quarterback, to take less because that's not how it flows. I think that a lot of people looked at what Tom Brady did and spit and expect that this would be the expectation for all quarterbacks, which not everybody's married to a billionaire. You see what I'm saying? And that was Tom Brady's story. You know, so I, I give it what you're saying, but this is a difficult situation. All I can say is that the quarterback is going to always demand more money because it's the NFL and it stands for not for long. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for calling in, bro. Yeah, thank you, Lord. I appreciate you for having me on. Yeah, anytime. And you have a blessed day. Yes, indeed. Good, good call from him, but I get it. 
I would like to see Trey Lance. But the only way Trey Lance is going to get playing time is if the quarterback get hurt. And I'm not banging on the table saying, hey, let the quarterback get hurt because I don't foresee Trey Lance outperforming Dak Prescott, even if it is to a degree in the Oxnard training camp and preseason, that don't hold any weight versus a regular season game. The only way Trey Lance get in and to outperform Dak Prescott unless he get hurt. That's the only that's the only way. That's the only way. I don't foresee, I don't foresee Dak Prescott losing his job in the offseason. It's that there's there's not enough tangible evidence. And then how can you measure? You, that's not a measurable tool. And preseason is not a measurable tool because no, there's no scheme put into place. And then the measure of talents that you're going up against is not the same. It's not equivalent. The only way Dak Prescott can lose his job will be due to an injury. I'm just telling y'all the truth. I know a lot of people don't want to accept that, but that's just how it is. I got Syracuse Joe from the 315. You're live on the nation. Talk to me. What's good, Law? What's good, baby? Hey, all is well. Can't complain. All right, man. So, listen, there's a bunch of different things going on right here. And I think the caller before last, um, he, I mean, he was smoking. He, he was on point. Everything he said, I appreciate. You can appreciate your, your um, platform, bro. Right, right. Appreciate You're doing it. things right. Um, appreciate you having me on. Listen, first of all, the system, there, there are so many great quarterbacks, bro, great individuals even in other sports now that i say that even in other sports that have not been successful due to a system or the lack thereof um i mean just let's take our current coach who had aaron Rodgers, and they only went once All right they, they 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 won it once Within his tenure, within his time there, he was he was within a, a idea of going back and and having the talent or the ability to go back within that set of time, regardless of who he played against. But they only won it once. Right. All everything that we keep talking about, the one caveat seems to be the Joneses. You can bring in as much as you. We've never had. Even on some of our bad teams, we could pull out talent. We we rarely had piss poor teams. We we've never we we've had situations where you could look at one side of the ball or the other, and like you were talking about earlier, you you couldn't find anybody on either side of the ball when the other side was bad. Yeah, that would help lift. That would help create. That would help push things forward. Listen. The right. coaches have have not at some point. The coaches have not been coaches that could coach us out of a situation. Mind you, when we keep talking about all of this player acquisition and all the talent we do have, we still have bargain players. Name me a bargain free agent that we bought in that within the playoffs played like he did during the regular season. Well, let me say this too, mm-hmm. though. You're going, you're going to get a lot of inflated stuff too because people are going to always scale. Like They're going to give you more credit than what it is, right? They're going to say, well, this guy is ultra talented. The Cowboys got a, nothing, got a, lot, of talented, a lot of talent on their team because think about it. We play more primetime games than any other team in the National Football League. So Mm -hmm. the ability for Marquise Bell to be seen on the national television screen is more likely than a Fred Warner or than a whoever. You can name me any uh, linebacker. The visibility Mm -hmm. is going to be higher here. The visibility for Bland is higher here. Like Geno, like nobody mentioning Geno Stone had a hell of a year last season, right? I think he had five or six interceptions, close to seven. But by him playing for the Baltimore Ravens, 
nobody glorified right. that because he playing for the Baltimore Ravens. But if he played for the Cowboys, they would have been like, oh, my goodness, look at this steal. Geno Stone, man, back-to-back -back season with five or more interceptions. He's, phenom he's phenomenal, right? But by it being that he plays for the Baltimore Ravens, nobody knows of him as much. But the casuals wouldn't even know he exists, right? But they know Bland. They know Bland. And and it, it, yep. it's a, it's cut both ways. When he make a bad play, everybody knows it. When he make a good play, everybody knows it. That's the idea, bro. Mm -hmm. Squeaky will gets the grease. Sweet but will gets the grease. When 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 you doing all of that, you you have these players that you bought in, and during the regular season, our bargain players are like, yo, we got these, we got these dudes. We we resurrected careers. We we change whatever. We get cash paid for the regular season. But when when the playoffs come, they bargain players. It's yeah. exactly what we paid for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you yeah, yeah, them. yeah. You, you feel me? That's, yeah, you give what you pay for. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the Rod that's, 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 man. That's, yeah, yeah. They ain't my Nikes, exactly man. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's exactly it. So I don't, I don't believe, I don't believe none of, I mean, you know, we dealing with the Joneses. We we absolutely are dealing with the Joneses with with all of this free agency stuff, bro. Nothing we lost, nothing that we lost out of what we lost, like nine players. What do we lose? Like half <laughs> half the rotation of defensive understanding. We lost yeah. like six. Well, I don't even know how many people we lost. I lost count. Yeah. But none of the names that we lost, lost, none of them are irreplaceable. Right, right. Not a one. We're not looking at that. A lot of I, I I noticed this about a lot of the NFL teams, especially the ones in our division. Right. I noticed this that a lot of them can't draft, so they use the free agent understanding, meaning the the hired guns. They use the free and Philly is better at this than anybody. They use the free agent hired gun to fill places where they've been inept, which is drafting. Right. They can't draft. They're poor at drafting. Dallas, on the other hand, has the disease of the Joneses, and they, they know that they can draft. They live on the draft, right. and that's where, you should, they, that, that's where you should be. You should kind of live on that idea, but you don't ever supplement your meal with the right size burger. You, yeah. you steady eating. You steady eating these these pieces and these this, this this pea over here and this piece of carrot over there. But the protein that you need is has been by far the biggest piece of your your inept idea. You you need better and more protein, bro. And and they haven't been supplemented. Yes, and indeed, they, man. Not, I, I appreciate I appreciate you, man. I love the analogy there, man. I thank you so much for calling in, man. All right, bro. Good call from you too, bro. Good call from okay. you. I, I, I love it. I love that analogy from Syracuse because um, we eating only enough to get satisfied or full. But he was talking about the well balanced, and I, and I kind of picked up what he's saying, you know. Reason why mama said eat them greens, you know what I'm saying? And, and then get your protein in there too, you know. You got to be uh, shaped right for for the situation. And on both sides of it, can you get by? Yeah. But you got to be sustainable enough to learn how to build to complement. And uh, I, I was watching uh, my guy Scott Walker Steele show earlier this morning, and I, I listened to a caller while I was uh, going going through some files over here on my end. And he was talking about, you know, the rebuild. We're going through a soft rebuild. And, and Scott was like, hey, let's cut all of the semantics, man. We re rebuilding. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's a rebuild. It, it's, it's what they're doing, they're rebuilding. And when you think of it and you look at the history of the Cowboys, I think that they are trying to build something, but they don't know how. They don't have the blueprint. The grand arch, the person that gave the blueprint, the architect, 
of it all was Jimmy Johnson. You got to you got to dibble and dabble in all of it. How many Super Bowl rings do we have without Charles Haley in that situation? You know what I'm saying? How many Super Bowls do we have without going out without going into the free agency and willing and dealing with the trade aspect and making sure that hey that dog can bark, but I need a dog that can bite, not just bark, right? The dog that was doing all of that barking last year was cursed. Arr, 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 arr. Well, what a bite. We're looking for some bite, man. The barking is good and cool, but what a bite at, man. Parsons, impactful. But when we needed him the most, he's been used in the wrong spot. The run game, people were satisfied with the crumbs we were given, getting, I meant to say. There was no threat. So you got to have that perfect, well-balanced meal. And I get it. People going to complain all the time, man. Man, people going to complain. Moses had to deal with all of them folks, man. There are some people say, hey, man, let's go back to Pharaoh, man. At least, man, I might get a few lashes here and there. But, man, at least I eat some meat, man. Got paws if necessary. You know, at least I get to get a chance to get some water, man. <laughs> what am I? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, ah, hey, Pharaoh, man, I'm back. Yeah. Hey, I'm back, man. Let me get, let me get that hot dog, man, and, and, them, uh, and, 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 and that hamburger. Let me get that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, all right, hey, hey, hey. Moses and them, they wander around in the desert, man. Let me just go back, man. People still complain, man. Clothes never withered. Food falling out of the sky. But it wasn't, the, it wasn't structured the way they wanted. And that's where we are at right now. Jerry Jones have the inability to, to structure things so that we can ultimately win it all. And we, <laughs> I just hope it ain't gonna be no 40 years, man. <laughs> hey, bro, come on now, dog. Come on. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. I don't, I don't wanna be Moses. I can look over and I see all my children going over there. Hey, the Super Bowl is over there under. No, 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 no. I don't wanna be no 40 years, man. <laughs> I'm gonna speak out against that now. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> took them 40 years they supposed to get somewhere for 10 days it took them 40 years because somebody would just just, just <laughs> let, let me use another analogy man i don't want no 40 years no way man it's already shoot we got law somebody said hey man we got 11 more years to be 40 years man come on now <laughs> hey that's right man i got my guy um from the 206 you're in the mix man come on you, you're live <laughs> talk to me man what up law how you doing brother <clears throat> hey y'all as well hey y'all make uh good sense but you know we had a few like i keep saying we always have chances to win right it's just the structure when you come to a playoff game you got to mix it you got to call the right plays. That's why Darius can be mad at McCarthy because McCarthy. Y'all think we can't run because McCarthy don't call the right play. McCarthy likes to pass a lot, but he don't run. He had the running game because he had to board the a dowdle, and he was getting you four to five or six yards a carry. But y'all stopped running. And y'all was running the back the wrong way. And that's why teams wasn't paying no mind to the running game. But they said, okay, we know McCarthy like passing. He ain't going to run. And you know what I'm saying? So that's why I hope he got that new coordinator to help him back. You know, he, yeah, he, yeah, he, I, he I, 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 I get, I get he, your he, angle on that. That's, that's the, the same, like, the same impediments that Andy Reid had. Was yeah. is the same thing that Mike McCarthy is, is dealing with now, you know, is yeah. balance approach. Andy Reid would, would throw that thing. As, as the song came out a couple of years ago, many years ago, throw that thing in a circle. 
throw that thing in a circle. That's it. Andy Reid would just throw the ball and McNabb drops back and it's picked off. And they had good running backs all through the time. But McNabb yeah. would give you that, that that crazy scramble and he'll pick it, he'll throw a pick, and we'd be like, Yeah. They, they 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 leaned and died on that throwing, and they never ran the ball. And I'm I thank them I thank them for doing that. You know, so I, I would say that even going into this this year, we have to we have to establish the threat of the run. As, as much as people marveled, as much as people marveled at Aaron Rodgers, it's been it's been it's been nineteen it's been nineteen years he's been in the league with one ring. Thank you. See what I'm saying? And they supposed to have the best quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they only got one ring. See, Brady, you know, he would have lost some balls. Those teams all, all thought they self. Like Seattle with that dumb stuff. At the two-yard line. Look, mm-hmm. cause I've been in the Cowboys at the two-yard line at the Super Bowl. And Dak Prescott would have stepped back and threw that interception. That right there made the whole team turn on that quarterback. They did not like him after that, Russell. They were so hot. You see what I'm saying? So teams had a chance on a team that played. played uh, you got to give it to the Giants. They beat us. They, we beat them twice in regular season. Game playoff time. We had the lead. We gave up a... a a minute drive, a minute drive for halftime, 75 yards they scored. That turned to momentum. That's when I got nervous. And then everything started going wrong for us, and we lost 21-17. Like I say, we had our chances four times to go to the Super Bowl. So I'm wait, not wait, 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 wait. You said four times to go to the Super Bowl. Now you're talking about yeah. one, one definitive game. I mm-hmm. say three times. Uh, 2007. Oh wait, these that, 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 these are not yeah, these are not NFC championship games. These are not NFC championship. Oh games. no, we had the best team though, and we had the the number one seed, and we had the number two seed. We had 2016. That Prescott first year. That's when people go to the Super Bowl with their rookie quarterback. We had a good team. We lost. 2007. Romo now we choked. 2021. We had the. Uh, we was kicking the 49ers' butt. Then they finally got a way to beat us. That's when they turned the tire turn on. Then in 2022, we still had a chance. So we still had chances. I'm not going to get on here. Well, th- th- those are chances to win playoff games. We're talking about yeah, long sustainables. Matter. You win you that know. first playoff game, then you win the next and then you go to the playoffs. Well, we, 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 that, that, that was a situation that you can argue in, what, 2022 then, if that's the case. We beat the we that's beat the Bucks, and then all of a sudden you still had to win another one. And what we what happened? What happened when hard. what what happened when that when that when when Tony Pollard got his hip all well not his hip but he was a hip drop tackle got his ankle smashed into a thousand pieces. They were now a one dimensional team. Mad at you now. Now you you making a, a case for Darius when Tony Pollard got his ankle hurt. The other halfback. They got two or three catches, not Zeke. The other halfback, we go watch the game. I watched all the game. They put the one halfback in. He got six yards. Then they put him again. He got another six yards. And then he didn't play no more. Then you put a Zeke in. That's what, the team, that's what everybody gets frustrated because of the coaching staff. The coaching staff know if I put a zone in the game, I say, oh, man, Law running for six yards. Then I don't play law no more. Then I put the other half back in, and he's not doing it. And then that's our problem. you got to stop favoritism, people. If you favoritism, that's when you get your butt beat. Or if stop. you're not, if you're not you planned got- or prepared for those moments, then you would never get there. The team, the team, aver- the team averaged 2.1 yards per rush in that game. So there was Zeke. There was yeah. Zeke. But that's when you should have played the younger, the young back. He, he well, running, they, well, they, they, Davis, they Davis, over. Davis couldn't get in because of the fact that he was had a disgruntled meeting with the uh, coaches there during that week. I, I, I get, I get what you're saying. I get he, what you're saying. He's supposed to play. If you run it hard and you're doing your job, you're supposed to play, bro. 
Yeah. So 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 that's that, that why I said that's why I said this team gets into this emotional state whereas they, they crumble. So yeah. yeah, I mean and then and then the following year you, you, you lose Kelly Moore, which was pretty much probably a good thing. And now uh, and then twenty twenty three you you never cleared up the fact that you needed a running back. You franchise tag Tony Pollard coming off of an injury and you had the same levels of expectations well, to win the Super Bowl. Not, I'm not gonna get mad because uh-huh. y'all because I hear you I hear it I hear you uh fireball fans, some of you fakers, y'all get on here and complain, Oh man, they ain't gonna play Pollard, they ain't gonna let him go, they ain't gonna play so and so. So the Jones is here y'all. Giving they get so this is what the Joneses do. This is what I know they about to get rid of. Okay, Law. And this is they this is their technique. Law, we're gonna give you ten million. And they hope you come back and give them a deal. If you don't, they let your ass go. They say forget it. That's we that's gave you your money, <laughs> we made you rich, and we let you go. Bye. And that's why I don't agree with the guy on T V. It man, it's like forty halfbacks. Look at Davis that came from Denver. You guys never knew about Davis. A seventh round pick became one of the best running backs in the NFL. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna happen like that this oh, year. Oh, Terrell it's Davis. Gonna be a- well, yeah. you know, we, we, that that's speaking on both sides because yeah. if they if they the owners of this team, then they should be able to make the proper calculations, man. It should be somebody sitting in his studio in Dallas, like me sitting in my studio. Being able to let the Joneses know that franchise tagging the player is not a great move. That is, yeah, that is what great, great teams don't franchise tag their players. You know what I'm saying? They it. figure out ways that's, that's to not. spread out the money and bring multiple toots of different kinds <laughs> of caliber of players to the table. And the Jones family, for the life of me, they they use the franchise tag a little bit too much, and they don't dance yeah, around in no, free agency on the front money. end. huh? I'm glad they didn't do it this year. Thank God for that. Uh, yeah, but but, but they still like they still dragging you know, their feet, MJ. They they dragging their feet on well, on these contracts, which which will be like pretty much a little too late to even dance and do anything. They should have well, been well, already did the well, CD Lamb contract. Well, we only know only two people I'm worried about. Only two people I'm worried about. Law. Everybody else got to play. It's uh is uh number eighty eight. And number 11. That's it. Now, if they don't sign them and they trade them, then y'all can come over here and cuss me out. That's all you people worried about, law. I don't care about nobody else. So I'm not worried about that. And I just want them to, they're going to draft good. I'm not worried about the draft. We're going to get some good free agents because, like I say, a lot of people going to be ready after the draft. Like I told you what they did because I heard uh, Fish, the Fish Report. And the other guy on TV, he said the Cowboys didn't make the no play after the 29th. Then they can make all the picks they want because they won't lose. They uh, they got, I think they got three fours next year and like two threes. So they, yeah, like yeah, say, yeah. They, I, I feel you with that, man. But I appreciate that. Thank you for calling in, MJ. All right, man. Good, good show. And a uh, high about them Cowboys and uh, Darius. We gonna win, bro. Hey, let's go, let's go. Appreciate <laughs> you, man. Good call from. Um, I, I get. I, I think that some some of us would never understand. That. Football is a total body of also experiences. And leaning on fourth and fifth round draft picks and sixth and seventh round draft picks, I get all of that. But you still going to, you can't, there's no shortcut to success. And here I am, I'm not trying to tell the Jones family how to be successful because that's subjective too. They, they, they are multi-billionaires, right? But you are not going to get the levels of experiences leaning on fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh round draft picks all to hit together. So that's why by nature of the NFL draft, 
that you see the teams just like the 49ers went and got a Javon Hargraves, right, last season. Because that is experience. Javon Kenlaw wasn't ready and available. They drafted him in the first round. He wasn't ready and available. That's why you pair up Armstead with Hargraves and with the, um, what's that guy named, uh, Bosa. You don't pair them up with rookies and guys that you hope for in the fifth and sixth round. Every now and then, a fifth and a sixth round will turn your head or an undrafted guy will turn your head and say, hey, this guy's making plays. But to what expense? To what expense? And that has exactly happened with Terrence Steele. It took a year and a half for us to go through all of that to get the product. And now he's in this situation that he's getting paid a hundred million dollars, right? Or whatever he's getting paid. And we hope that he can come back to that one year that he shined. And he was an undrafted guy. We can bang on the table and say, yeah, let's, let's pop the confetti. We still waiting on Tolbert to turn the corner third round draft pick. When you could have packaged the third round draft pick or the second and the third round draft pick that we got from Sam Williams and his Tobert to get a known commodity. Right now, a CD and a DK Metcalf would have took us further than a Sam Williams and a Jalen Tobert, right? So I get it. We can talk about potential value in Sam Williams and Jalen Tobert to turn the corner, which they will do. But even if that is a situation, yeah, 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 yeah. Still was undrafted, but, but, but you guys get what I'm saying. You can't lean on that, Keith Floyd. That's, that's my analogy with it. You can't lean on the late-round draft picks and the undrafted. You can't lean on those guys to ultimately win you a Super Bowl. You can't. Last but not least, uh, 585, you're live. Yeah, what's going on, Law Nation? Hey, man, all is well. I can't complain, bro. Talk to me. Cool, man. Um, yeah, what's going on, Cowboy Nation, too? Uh, I believe I believe that the Joneses, they think they know what they're doing, but they really don't. Uh, like I keep saying, Steve is running his team the way he wants to run it, fire ass. Who comes in, who comes out, who comes out, like, fire ass, these free agents and these signings. Right. Uh, my thing is, even if the Cowboys didn't go into this free agency and grab a lot of free agent players, I still would want him to at least try to do some of the stuff they was doing before they did last year. Spend a couple of them, the picks, of tor- them, those uh, picks, the, uh, the fifth round picks that we're going to be getting this year, uh, the uh, those. Uh, the picks that we're going to get this year. Right. Try to get some older, like a couple more veteran players. You know what I mean? Some, but good veteran players. I don't want these almost out the door veteran players. You got to at least bring people in here like that's on Gilly level and that's on uh, Cook's level in here. Do that for the defense this year. You know what yeah. I mean? All the way. Fix the defense. You know, get the defense enough pieces so when Michael Parsons goes off to go take a breather that he – the defense doesn't look any different. You yep. know what I mean? We still and, 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 and the teams. other thing is is this right here. Just because you don't win the Super Bowl doesn't mean it didn't work. See, just because we didn't win the Super Bowl last year doesn't mean that Gilmore and Brandon Cooks trading for those boys didn't work. You know? That seems like just because we made the the free agent move to go pick up Brandon Carr doesn't mean it didn't work. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're supposed to say, okay, that contract killed us in 2012 or what have you. You should have been figuring out ways to trade up out of it or add more pieces around them. What the Cowboys mm-hmm. did was they, they, they went and got Brandon Carr and they folded it on and said, okay, now, 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 now win is one. You know what I'm saying? When they didn't add yeah. a safety to match up with him, right, they leaned it on J.J. Mm-hmm. Wilcox and Jeff Eve. And you still had so mm-hmm. many deficient areas. Whereas we see in the same situation to with Michael Parsons. We yeah. like Trayvon Diggs. That's good. 
we like Michael Parsons. That's good. But add to like what complements a linebacker who's playing at edge. Well, hell, that's another hole that you got there because you drafted him ultimately to be a linebacker. But by moving him to the edge, that created that voided area why you drafted him in the first place. So you got to go in and go get that linebacker to fill in that voided. Mm-hmm. So you, you got extras. Now go add more to it so you can complement that spot. Yeah, and a lot of people don't understand. Like, I, I, how can I say this? For this defensive line situation that we have, a lot of people don't understand that people like the Kansas City Chiefs, people like the Baltimore Ravens. They got rotational big men on that de- on their defenses. That's what makes them good. Right. We don't have rotational good big men. You know what I mean? Even, so even when some of the, the, their best big men go out, it's pretty good big men coming in to, to, take, to take up the slack so these dudes can get breathers. Like, we we not looking at it for what it is, man. It's like they they got they are deep. A lot of these teams are deep in certain situations that we not deep in. It's good that we was pretty deep in far as uh far as the the defensive ends last year, but we wasn't deep at linebacker. We gave away all our linebackers, so that was stupid. Yeah, yeah. You crazy. know what I mean? They give up all our linebackers like that. You know, we gave away defensive pieces like uh, the uh, the gorilla dude that's over there over there with Washington yeah, the vanilla right gorilla now. yeah 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 <laughs> we gave these so many pieces up we gave where the other big dude we had it's it's the Cowboys and they staff they gotta quit doing stuff like that right. quit giving away our pieces and let us build on our young pieces if you're gonna say we're gonna draft these guys draft them and stay with them unless yeah. they're just not not good at all you know what I mean but at the same time you still need veteran players to help the young guys out. You can't have a whole you cannot have a whole team full of young dudes and expect them to play like veteran players. It just does not work like that. So the yeah. Cowboys need to go ahead and make sure, you know, make sure they have a good draft this year, but at all at the same time, bring in some veteran dudes. And even during the season, around trade deadline, if we can get a piece of some some a disgruntled player over here, a superstar over here that we can bring in for that year. Yep, and it, just, it, just for it, example, it, like like for example, Chris Jones, we know that he's phenomenal, right? Just flat out phenomenal yeah. playing at that spot. But with midway through the season, the Chiefs they said, "Oh snap, let us go and solidify that interior even more." They went and got an Isaiah Bugs. I remember when he was released. That's three hundred and thirty five pounds. They got him. They went and got a Mike Penno. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Who was three hundred and thirty five pounds as well. That's big. That's big. I hate to say big meat, but that's big meat inside, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they had mm-hmm. all of that. Pause is necessary, but they went and yeah. made sure that they that the number one goal is to still have guys in the pinch. That when I rotate my other guy out that we would still have big boys down inside that can stop the run, they can plug up A-gap or B-gap, and we can keep things moving. Whereas the Cowboys, we were like, okay, it's, just, it's my guy, uh, Hankins or Bus. Yeah, man. Yeah. That was that – then you see Hankins getting tired and getting mowed over. Yeah. You're supposed to have two big dudes in the middle, man. Come on, man. I keep trying to <laughs> – like, this could just be me, man. This could just be me. I like Odiggy Zua. I like him part time sometimes staying in the middle of the defense. Yeah. Sometimes why can't we put a Diggy Zua, a Diggy Zua to the to the edge to help out to collapse a pocket? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, is, like like a Bennett. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. And every time I, I said that, somebody said, Oh, you wrong. I've seen a couple plays last year, they put him at the edge to help out a little bit sometimes. Yeah. He did some things. It's like, come on, man, like they gotta get smarter and I and I'm I'm, I'm just I just need Cowboy fans, uh, us as a, as a nation, to understand this. You do have to spend money to win on, in the playoffs, man. You got to spend money on good players, man. Them are great players to get over the hump. You do. And I'm going to leave with this. I'm going to leave with this, man. Look what the the uh, uh, L.A. Rams did. Look what yeah. they did. They brought in somebody for the offense and the defense. They brought in... ODB, he still had a little, he, had, he still had a little juice in the tank, and they brought in, in uh, Von Miller, and that got them over that hump that they needed to get over to go win that thing. It did, man. That's and, what you got to do, man. And they said it would set them back for decades. Uh, she, I don't know, that's the world's fastest right decade. They right back, literally, 
The only reason why they didn't make the playoff the year before that because Stafford got hurt in mm-hmm. 2022. If he had, if he hadn't got hurt, I think they would have been a playoff team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would have playoff I team. I think so too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, and, and I still think yeah. they're gonna be relevant without without Aaron Donald. I still think they're gonna be relevant. Oh man, you see what they got? The, 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 the Turner kid. It. Yeah, yeah. He had about seven eight, seven sacks. <laughs> Kobe Turner, I believe. Yeah. 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 Right, they might fall off a little bit in that area, but I don't think they're going to fall off much yeah. because they know how to. They know what they want, and they know the type of players that they want, and they're not afraid to go get the the players that they need to help them get to where they want to go. That's what's wrong with this team. They need to cut it out. We all watching them. Mm-hmm. Now, if they're going to keep doing this, hey man, they're going to get the feedback that they they deserve. Yeah, they are. No love for them, man. But I still love the Cowboys, man. I still love the Cowboys, man. I just. I just, I'm disappointed in the Joneses. That's my thing, man. Yeah, yeah. You're right, man. Appreciate you for calling in, fam. Good call from you. All right. Peace. Peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think his name is Kobe Turner. Goodbye. Uh, appreciate everybody who called in. I thank those who uh, been in the mix with me. I uh, appreciate everybody. Let me see. Let me make sure. Because so many people talking about Jalen Carter, Mozzie, blah, blah, blah. It's Kobe Turner. He was like, okay, I'm eating it over here, dog. As a rookie. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If 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 we were to have this type of production, people see. Let me say this, man. Dude had eleven sacks last season, y'all. Thirty two solos. Yeah, yeah, he two eighty eight though, but he's inside. The wake four, he he's he just like Osa, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um people were talking about Jalen Carter, man. Jalen Carter, Jalen Carter, Mozzie, Mozzie, Mozzie. Kobe Turner was drafted that year and not a soul, not not nobody mentioned him. You know, not nobody even yell out his name. And uh, I think Bobby Brown, they drafted Bobby Brown a year before that. People fail to realize that the Rams been draft Rams draft well. They draft pretty well. Puka Nakua and all of them boys and and a whole bunch of other the Rams draft well, man. They don't get no credit. Cause they ain't the Cowboys. Shoot. Rams Rams draft well, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Shoot. Uh that's all I'm gonna say. Rams draft well and look what they did during this offseason. Uh they they went and got some DBs now. That was the only issue that everybody was like, okay. Inside, you know, in, in the middle of the field, they, they did a really good job. Outside, they was like, all right, cool, you know. They going to be right around the corner, back a good team, you know. And it is what it is. But nobody mentioned it. It's the Rams, you know. <laughs> Let us, don't y'all know. If Kobe Turner was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys and he had 11 sacks from the interior, the last time we had a guy to have double-digit sacks from the inside was Jason Hatcher. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look how long ago that was, you know. Man, I'm just telling y'all, man, shoot. They, they draft well, too. And Ernest Jones, I like his skill sets as a linebacker. Let me see what Bobby Brown did last year. Let me see what Bobby Brown did from the interior as well. Bear with me, y'all. Bear with me. You know, I'm going to look up Bobby Brown stuff too. Bobby, get down, Brown. Gig him. Let's see what he did. He didn't do much. He had one sack. Six pressures, so he rotational guy. But, yeah, they do draft pretty well, though. So, uh, Cowboy Nation, appreciate y'all. For, for those who don't know, y'all y'all say that man's name. Kobe. Kobe and them. <laughs> to all the haters, appreciate everybody, man. Uh, Cowboy Nation, I thank all of you all for tuning in. The name is Law Nation. On the way out, I uh, hope all is well. If I offended anyone, charge it to my head, not my heart. Let's continue to find ways to to grow, develop, and do all of the great things. Salute to Prize Picks as well for for being a phenomenal 
phenomenal. Be sure to use promo code LAW when selecting your prize picks because at the end of the day, I want y'all to be on that winning train too. So I shared that information. 100% of deposit match up to $100, right? So put 100 on me, baby. And Kevin, <laughs> Bobby Brown can sing too. He ain't lying. Shout out to Bobby Brown. Shout out to you, Birdie. Shout out to you. I made sure I didn't read much of y'all comments this week or this day because it's April Fool's. Yep. Fools. I say, why do fools fall in love? I don't know. But that's just how it goes. But we in love with this team. And we're going to have to figure it out via the draft on how far this team can go. Cowboy Nation. One way or another. The only fool is Jerry and Stephen Jones. Don't say that too loud. I got MJ. He going to be mad. <laughs> Shout out to them, though. Shout out to them. Unlucky, appreciate you. Ratio, thank you. Miko, T. Foster, appreciate everybody. I don't even know what I can say today. But all I can say is just have heart, ladies and gentlemen. Stand 10 toes down and stand firm in what you believe in. There will always be a puncher's chance. There will always be the light on the other side. You just gotta continue to head and travel towards that way. It's not as bad as it could be, but it's not as bad as it will be if you just focus your mind to it. And I know, I, I don't like this team at all. I wish I did. I love this team, and that's the problem. <laughs> and there's no April Fools to that. None. So let's stay focused. The difference between a light and a laser, they both beams of light. The light bulb, it's not as focused as the laser. Just focus in. They say the laser can cut any substance on this earth. And all it is is a beam of light that's triple focused in on what it need to do. So let's get lasered in, Cowboy Nation. Continue to do your mock drafts. Continue to simulate your things. The two most important days of your life is the day you were born and the day you realize your purpose. So let's continue to figure out what your purpose is in life. Check out Law Nation 2.0. We will be doing motivation content there. There'll be more and more clips that's coming around. Check this out. Check that page out. Law Nation 2.0. And it, it, it was, as well will be on the Facebook as well as the IG pages. That's all the time that I have for this beautiful moment. Be sure to hit the like button, share this content. Give me my thing, music. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Come on. We about one love, baby. One love, baby, and roll those credits. Salute to Matt Batten, baby. So over it. Salute to you. Shout out to Glenn K. Charge it to the game. I'm with L, yeah, I'm with T Black, I'm with Evan now. I'm with A, yeah, I'm with J, yeah, I'm with Chuck and now. Still the same, I switch 
Switching sides, now it's about loyalty. You switch sides off for the bag, and that's worth more to me. I mix Nike with designer, I experiment. You just rock what's on the shelf, and I'm not feeling it. Search for the one, but baby girl, it's not the real as this. Can't trust a soul, I keep a hammer, call it too legit. I've been really in the field, let the rush, I love the feel. Lately, I just wanna run it up. Don't need no deals, I make the deal. I have to take it to a meal. Lately, I just wanna run it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kinda check us on. Lately, I just wanna run it up. When you lay your head on that pill at night, Lady, so I, get I that just want to run it up. Lately, I just want to.